please be seated. Everyone, please be seated. I hope you all were able to find decent parking. All right, so you were given an oath downstairs, but I'm going to give you an oath as it relates to this particular uh, case. So if everyone could please raise your right hand for me, please. Do you and each of you solemnly swear or affirm in the case of the state of Texas versus Jose Angel Ruiz, you will a true verdict render according to the law and the evidence, so help you God? All right, you may lower your hand. State. True bill of indictment. In the name and by authority of the state of Texas, the grand jury of Barrett County, state of Texas, duly organized and paneled and sworn as such at the May term AD 2022 of the 186th Judicial District Court of said county in said court at said term, do present and into said court that in the county and state aforesaid and interior to the presentment of this indictment, count one, paragraph A. On or about the seventh day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause serious bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, <clears throat> by a manner and means unknown to the grand jury. Paragraph B. On or about the seventh day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly, by omission, cause serious bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, and the defendant had assumed care, custody, and control of Mercedes Lasoya and failed to do so, and that the defendant failed to seek adequate medical treatment for Mercedes Lasoya. Count two. On or about the 28th day of January, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did use and exhibit a deadly weapon, namely hands, that in the manner of its use and intended use was capable of causing death and serious bodily injury, and defendant did intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, here and after referred to as complainant, by covering the mouth and nose of Mercedes Lasoya with the hand of the defendant. Count three. On or about the 21st day of January, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, by striking Mercedes Loya with the hand, Lasoya with the hand of the defendant. Count four. On or about the 23rd day of January, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, by pinching Mercedes Lasoya with the hand of the defendant. Count five. On or about the first day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, by inserting tacks into the feet of Mercedes Lasoya. Count six, on or about the second day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger, by striking Mercedes Lasoya with a belt. Count seven, on or about the third day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who's 14 years of age or younger by pulling the hair of Mercedes Lasoya with the hand of the defendant. Count eight. On or about the fifth day of February, 2022, Jose Ruiz, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly cause bodily injury to Mercedes Lasoya, a child who was 14 years of age or younger by striking Mercedes Lasoya with a cell phone against the peace and dignity of the state signed the foreman of the grand jury. To those charges, how do you plead? Not guilty. Any opening statements from the state? Yes, Judge. You may proceed. May I please the court? Opening counsel. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In our career, the things we see are things people don't want to see. 
we see a lot of horrible things working in criminal law. Sometimes those things are even extra horrible to us. In this case, you're gonna have to see things that nobody should ever have to see. Let alone things that a child at the age of five should have to endure. We apologize in advance for having to show you these awful things, but unfortunately we have to. We have to show you things that this man, Jose Ruiz, and Mercedes Lasoya, who's the five-year-old, her mother, Katrina Liz Mendoza, sorry, did to Mercedes. Hmm. You're going to hear that Katrina had two young children at a very young age, Mercedes and Jordan. Jordan is about nine months older than Mercedes. You're going to hear that, according to Jose and Katrina, Mercedes was the child that just wouldn't listen. She was the bad kid. You're gonna hear that Katrina and Jose were dating. And at some point in their relationship, they weren't living together. You're gonna hear from the evidence that at some point in the relationship, Katrina's talking to Jose about Mercedes and how she just won't listen. And Jose says, let me have her. She'll listen to me. Jose takes custody of Mercedes. He takes her to his apartment. Katrina and Jordan don't go. You're gonna hear from the evidence that they joined them later, that Katrina and uh, Jordan joined them later and they live at, at Jose's apartment for about two weeks. You're gonna hear that those two weeks were the last two weeks of Mercedes' life. You're gonna hear about the torture that Mercedes endured you're gonna hear from a lot of witnesses in this case. You're gonna hear from police. You're gonna hear from medical personnel. You're gonna hear from neighbors that could hear this man beating Mercedes through the walls. And he could, they could hear her crying out for help. You're gonna hear from Katrina Mendoza. We want you to know that we don't think she's a good mother, if I haven't made that clear at this point. But she accepted a plea bargain in this case. She was also a defendant in this case. And she accepted a plea bargain, and she is here to testify about what Jose Ruiz did in this case. Because she's accepted responsibility for her part. You're gonna hear that Katrina and Jose pointed fingers at each other this whole time. But like I've said, Katrina's accepted responsibility. She has taken a plea bargain in this case. You're gonna hear, or you're gonna see the evidence and it's gonna show you that both Katrina and Jose are guilty of abusing five-year-old Mercedes. And you're gonna have more than enough evidence at the end of this trial to find this man guilty of all counts. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, I have this uh, difficulty. Excuse me. I also took notes because I'm covering quite a bit. Precious little Mercedes Lasoya was killed on February 7th of 2024, 2022, excuse me. Under Texas law, we recognize killing a person as murder. There's no murder charge. I'm going to object that she's violating her own motion of limiting. This is right. 
the murder, I'm just, just reciting what the law is. Um, cry, cry. Can we approach that? No, the objection is sustained. Okay. She's the murder of someone 10 years of age or younger. Excuse me. Yeah. The objection has been sustained, sustained counsel. Uh, Sorry, I can't imagine murder. Objection. Jose didn't save Mercedes. He didn't save her life. He was the hookup boyfriend of Katrina, the mother. He hadn't adopted the children, didn't live with the children, and let them stay there for a couple couple weeks, but that was it. CPS had investigated Katrina for <coughs> years. They have pages and pages of records just, against Katrina. I, I'm sorry to interrupt again. I, I'm just going to object to argumentative. <coughs> All right, that'll be over. San Antonio police didn't save Katrina, uh, Mercedes. There were piles of reports against Katrina. SAP didn't, didn't save her life, right? Uh, this case is not charged as a, as a word I'm not allowed to say, homicide. Um, it was charged as abuse. Now, the evidence that the state provided to me, and almost everything I received, I received from the state. This first, the fact is, Mercedes had asthma. Mercedes' six-year-old sister, Jordan, had a front row seat for everything that happened um, to her sister and to her. They were living at the time on February 7th at the apartment of a friend, Jeanette. I believe she's going to be one of the state witnesses. They didn't have any place to live because she had been thrown out of everywhere. Jordan said that day that her mother was, uh, Jordan's word, jamming food down Mercedes' mouth. Mercedes kept spitting it up. She was being gorged, she kept spitting it up. Katrina got mad, according to Jordan's statement. I wasn't there. And she said she, she jammed the spoon down her throat. At that point, Mercedes, who had been on a chair, fell off the chair. According to Jordan, she had no breath. Katrina went down to the floor and tried to give her breath at least twice, but Mercedes had no more breath. According to Jordan, at that point Mercedes, uh, Mercedes was picked up by her mother and they didn't go to 911 call, they didn't do anything. They ran to Jose on Hale's apartment, which was in the same complex. Apparently, he tried to resuscitate her too. He tried, to, according to Jordan, tried to give her breath. She didn't have any more breath. After that, Jose took Katrina and Mercedes' body to the hospital. Now, they were all the way up by Havener Road. I'm assuming you all know that general location up by 10. They went to a hospital on the far south side, which is now closed. It was a Texas, Texas Vista Hospital. <coughs> According to the reports from the ER, Katrina came running inside holding Mercedes' dead body. They didn't pronounce her dead right away, but they, they acknowledged that her body was lifeless and cold. Katrina told Jose to stay in the parking lot because her father didn't like her, like him, and the father was at the hospital when they got there. She was screaming, help my child, help my baby. The ER people attempted resuscitation at least three times, which they're required to do, but there was never any hope. The charge nurse testified, or rather made a statement, that he actually pulled food out of Mercedes' mouth. Jordan, Jordan was brought to the hospital by the police or somebody after um, Mercedes was taken there. And when she was interviewed, she said, I'm the good child. The 
Mercedes took her to the morgue. Mercedes battered her body. The medical examiner did an autopsy. His basic cause of death was murder by muscle collapse. I'm sorry, I took that word. Take that word back. I'm sorry. Excuse me. H homicide. Excuse me. All right. The objection will be sustained. Defense. This is what you all requested that that term not be used. So you're not allowed to use that term, counsel. Thank you, Your The ME said there was muscle collapse, and that was the cause of the child's death. But he didn't rule out asphyxia. And that's something I've been working on because I believe it was a matter of asphyxia that caused her death based on the testimony of Jordan, the six-year-old child. I'm gonna object the argument, Doug. Sustained. Now, Jose has been charged with various counts as they were just read to you. The state's main witness is Katrina Mendoza. She pled guilty to one count of serious bodily injury, but not that she did anything, that she failed by I'm omission. Object to argument sustained. <coughs> not that not that she did anything uh, but omission. Again, I'm gonna object to argument, it's the same statement. Sustained. She was tried there were many charges, but ultimately pled to omission. Now, judge records and publishes everything that goes on in this courtroom. Normally, we don't have to do that. Sustain. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you step outside the courtroom briefly, and I will bring you back. You're not allowed to discuss anything that you've heard so far. Does everyone understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.
All right, everyone, please be seated. The Trina faces a maximum of 45 years in prison, and she's applied for probation. Her sentence is delayed until after this trial to see how well she does in bringing charges and proving the charges against her. I'm going to object to argumentative. Sustain. She doesn't get her sentence until after this case. The rule of, Texas Rule of Criminal Procedure, the 3814, does not allow a person to be convicted solely on the testimony of. I'm going to object to argumentative. The rule, the reading of the rule is argumentative. Sustain. I hope to prove that the source of all relative, relevant evidence against Jose on Hell is from Katrina. Allegedly, this happened in an apartment. Anything that was done would have been a limited number of people that were witnesses. But there is an advantage to Katrina for testifying against him. I'm going to get to argument that this is fine. Additionally, there's another rule that's going to be relevant, and that is the rule of evidence number 705. That rule applies to expert witnesses. And based on my theory that Katrina's behind everything that's heard, this means that we're allowed to ask the expert witnesses. Again, this is argument. This is not opening statement. This is called explanation of the rule. Rule 705 allows us to question witnesses. That's sustained. I'm not allowed to mention any rules of evidence. The objection has been sustained. May I ask you for further comment? The objection has been sustained, counsel. Am I clear, Your Honor? I'm not allowed to mention any rules. The objection has been sustained, counsel. Thank you. I'm going to try this. In regard to the rule that I'm not supposed to mention, we have to ask the person their underlying data. I have to object to the sidebar comments here ruling. Sustained. The underlying data for their decisions. That ruling, or rather that hearing, has to be outside the presence of the jury. Judge, I'm going to object. You heard about the burdens of proof. And the state has to convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of the facts. Everything that comes out, by and large, is from witnesses. Not what I say. And that's another thing. Because I'm talking to you, because I'm saying things to you. You don't have to listen to me. And you don't have to listen to the state. You do have to listen to the judge. The reality is, you're going to be making your decision based on the evidence against, that's presented against Jose Angel. There are clarifications, and we'll have to wait until the end to find out. There was a press conference also. I'm going to object to any press. It's not something that should come in evidence. Your Honor, what's relevant about talking about this press conference. Because it's a motivation for why. Excuse me, counsel. Make your opening statements. Opening statements are what you believe the evidence will show. So if you don't believe the evidence will show it, then it should not be before this jury. There was a press conference right after Mercedes' death. At that press conference, Joe Galley, who used to be one of the reporters for Channel 12, asked a witness, a family member. I'm going to object to hearsay. All right. That will be overruled. Asked a family member about what had happened. And the family member said, we've all tried many times. Reports to CPS and the police to try to save Mercedes. Nothing was done. That's relevant because Joe next asked. This is objection argumentative. Okay. Sustained. Anyway, motivations came out for that factor. We're the judges in the case. Despite what I say, what you see is what counts. I am asking for a not guilty. At this point, Jose Angel is still presumed innocent. Jose Angel is not an angel. He's a hookup guy. I'm not an angel either. 
I'm not a hookup, hookup girl, but... I'm going to go to argumentative. Thank you. All right, state, call your first witness. Judge, at this time, state would invoke the rule. Part the rule will be invoked. Call your first witness. Yes, Your Honor. Can we make sure defense doesn't have any witnesses in the courtroom? I believe somebody who has been subpoenaed is in the courtroom. All right. The rule has been invoked. Are there any witnesses in the courtroom for either the state or the defense? I subpoenaed Channel 12, Your Honor. I think they're in the courtroom. Are there any witnesses in the courtroom? Who did you subpoena from Channel 12? I would like the news editor or the news director. All right. Is the news director from Channel 12 in the courtroom? No, they are not. It was the Duke has taken to bring the news report. They are not here. The editor is not here. Somebody from Channel 12 is somewhere. They are not the editor. Did you subpoena the editor or did you subpoena the person who is here? I don't know who is here, Your Honor. Ms. Mitchell is the one that said there was a witness in the courtroom. The only person I subpoenaed was the head of the newsroom at Channel 12. All right. Is the head of Channel 12 present in the courtroom? They are not. Call your first witness. The state calls Gustavo Cervantes. If you'll take a seat here, please. Could you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? I do. All right. You can lower your hand. Make sure you keep your voice up so that the members of the jury can hear and the court reporter can hear. All right. If you'll state your name for the record, please. Gustavo Cervantes. State. Good morning, Gustavo. Where are you presently employed? I'm on the trauma team at University Hospital. And how long have you been there? I've been there since May. And what is your role? I'm a staff nurse in the trauma team. So what kind of training do you need to become a staff nurse at a trauma center? Usually good long experience in the emergency room in general. Experience in the emergency room? Yes. So do you have a degree or any kind of certification? I'm a registered nurse. And I know it sounds pretty fundamental, but what kind of schooling do you have to have to be a registered nurse? I have an associate's. It's a two-year degree. From what institution? Galen College of Nursing. And when did you get that? 2015. So when you got your degree at Galen, did you start working right away? Well, I was already working in the emergency room at Downtown Baptist since 2008. I was in LVN at the time, but I was in the ER from 2008 to 2015. And then just finished my degree and kept working in the emergency room. So what's the difference between an RN and an LVN? Amount of responsibility. The kind of medications you can give, the training, the schooling teaches you more about this disease process and how to manage patients. Okay. And so you were an LVN before you were an RN, right? Correct. What training did you have to be an LVN? It was a 14-month school. I got it through the Army. Okay. And how long were you in the Army? Eight and a half active and six in the reserves. From what years? 1994 to 2002 active duty, 2002 to 2008 reserves. Okay. And did you serve as an LVN in the Army? In the reserves. In active duty, I was infantry. Okay. So you were infantry, and then you got your LVN certification in the Army. In the reserves. I'm sorry, in the reserves. And you served in that capacity. Correct. Okay. So then in, let's see, 2008, that's when you left the military? Correct. And you went to work for the ER in downtown Baptist? Correct. How is working in an ER different than working in another part of the hospital? The pace, 
you don't know what to expect. You're getting everybody uh, fresh after injury or when the disease is going, so you have to figure everything out. Other parts of the floor, you you know what's going on with the patient. You have a general idea. All the testing is done. Um, with us, it's more uh, finding out a process and uh, a lot of times just acute uh, acute care. So you're getting them fresh. You might be trying to save their life. You might be just trying to find out what's wrong with them in general. Okay. And uh, is it safe to say that, uh, you said the words, you never know what you're going to get. Is it safe to say that the, the individuals who are working in the ER have to have a more broad knowledge? Uh, jack, jack of all trades. Um, so you uh, first worked in the ER in, in 2008 in a downtown Baptist, and then in 2015 you got your associates and became an RN, Correct. registered nurse. Um, where did you go in 2015? Uh, 2015 I stayed there at downtown Baptist, um, and then uh, I went and did a liaison work for a rehab hospital for about a year and then went back to the ER where I wanted to be. Okay. And the liaison work, was that still with uh, downtown Baptist? No, no, that was a different company. A Warm Springs Rehab. What was it? Warm Springs Rehab. Warm Springs Rehab. And how long were you doing that? I did it for about a year, but it wasn't. And then you went back to an ER? Correct. Northeast Baptist. Okay, you went to Northeast Baptist. Around that, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, you worked in the ER there. Correct. Uh, were you just a, a were you a staff nurse? Staff nurse, yes. Okay. And then, how long did you stay at Northeast Baptist? I stayed there for two years, and then uh, I went to work as a post-op nurse for a small surgical hospital, Heaton Ambulatory Surgical Hospital. Okay. Um, for a for about two years. Okay. All right. And then, after the first office, <laughs> where did you work? Um, that's when COVID came around. Okay. So I went to work uh, as a contract nurse, okay. uh, going to the most needed hospitals in in Houston and here, um, just doing doing COVID nursing. Okay. And is is, um, is that similar to an ER? It was still in the ER. Yeah. It was still the ER. Did you eventually stop being a contract nurse? Uh, once everything settled down and um, they started opening back up, um, I actually finished my COVID nursing. That's how I got to Southwest General. Okay. And they asked me to stay on as a charge nurse there once it was over. Okay. So, um, do, you, do you remember what year you went to Southwest General? Uh, that would have been 2021, I think. 2021? Yeah, I okay. think I'm, I'm at... And at some point, did Southwest General change names? Or? They did. They changed the names to uh, Texas Vista Medical Center. Okay. Okay. Now, you said you, you became a, a charge nurse there. Correct. Um, how is that different than a staff nurse? Um, you're responsible for the entire ER for the, your shift um, as far as assignments, um, being an in-between uh with the nurses and doctors, uh, making sure the nurses are doing their job, basically. Okay. Uh, head nurse. Correct. Okay. And were you in the ER at Southwest General? Yes. Okay. Texas Vista. Yes. Um, as so, at this point, you know, we're we're up to um, you started Southwest uh, Southwest General in 2021. Uh, do you remember when it turned to Texas? Sometime in 22, I don't remember exactly. Okay, okay. so um, you're there in 2022, and and when did it it shut down, right? Correct. When did it shut down? May of last year. Okay. Um, were you there? Until it, it was I was there on the very last day. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now um, that is. So you've, you've been working in an ER type of environment for about 20 years. Is that safe to say? Uh, 16. 16? 2008. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, 16 years. Um, have you seen um, children come into the ER? Many times, yes. Many times? Many times. Can you estimate like more than 100? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, have you seen uh, people who came in who maybe um, had exercised too hard and hurt themselves? Right. Have you seen people that come in that have been beaten? Yes. Okay. Um, in February of 2022, actually, I'm going to pause for a second. <clears throat> Okay, I, uh, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. I'm going to um, show you what I have marked for identification purposes as State's Exhibit Number One. Um, can you please do an X where Southwest General Texas Vista was located? Um, I'm going to go down here. I'm trying to. Honestly, I'm further down sir, I know <coughs> oh, I'm sorry I'm just trying to I think he's thinking out loud yeah I'm trying to sorry, find sorry. exactly if y'all are thinking out loud the court reporter puts that on the record okay and if you're going to think out loud <laughs> then you need to speak up so she can hear I apologize oh, yes it was further towards the south okay it was generally it was sorry about this. It was generally, uh, golly, this map isn't as detailed. Okay, so the map doesn't show it. No. Okay, let me see if I can get a better map for you. <laughs> sorry. Yes, I was. Do you recall um, a patient by the name of Mercedes Lasoya? Yes. You just testified that you have probably seen over a hundred child children that come in, and multiple people, numerous people who have been beaten or overworked. So, what is it about Mercedes Lasoya that you remember so well? Um, all of it, just the, the way she came, she was presented to us, um, and just the, okay. the condition. Okay. Um, you said how, how she was presented to you. First of all, um, do you recall how old Mercedes Lasoya was? Five years old. Brought her to the hospital. Um, my initial understanding was mom ran in with her, uh, yelling for help, um, and that's when my uh, triage nurse grabbed her from mom and brought her down to the to the main ER where we were at. And um, mom was was screaming for help. You said that's what I was told by the triage nurse. Could you hear her? Uh, once they came. Out of the triage area near the front entrance, I could hear him down the hallway. Okay, and, and what did you hear? Um, save my baby. Some uh, other things I really, at that point, I just focused on the child. Okay. And so who brought you Mercedes? Uh, my triage nurse. Uh, grabbed her from mom, I guess, at the front and came running down the hallway also yelling that uh, she wasn't breathing. Okay. And did you at any time uh, take over the care? I did. I did. Um, I took her from the triage nurse and uh, carried her into the room that was right behind us, um, put her on the bed, and that's when we started uh, working. So, Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. Okay. 
I'm going to show you what's been labeled States Exhibit Number Two. Okay. What is that? This is the chart for uh, Mercedes. It's, it's her uh, medical record. Okay. And who authored this? That would be me. Okay. So you authored this report. Correct. Okay. Now, um, what was the purpose of making this these records? Uh, to record the care of the patient, what was given, what was done, um, to maintain the record, just okay. record record maintain maintenance. And is is this something you do in for all patients? Every pa in? every patient has a medical record. Okay. Correct. And um, is it important for for medical history to make a, a right. record of everything? Right. Everything needs to be recorded uh, for the patient's health, for future visits, um, and also for legal reasons, of course, um, to re make sure that everything that we do for the patient is recorded and it's correct and it's... Okay. So... When we're looking at this, um, what kind of information did you record here? Uh, you always have the time of arrival, um, her triage level, um, the condition they came in, uh, include uh, set the initial assessment, which is their mental status, their uh, um, consciousness, um, weight. All, okay. Medical history, allergies, all the good all the things. Um, what is medical history? Uh, any um, previous medical conditions, surgeries that the patient may have had. Okay, and um, obviously Mercedes came in um, injured and needing help. So who did you get that history from? Who would that history have come, come from? Um, in a normal situation, it would have been the parent. Okay. Um, what is the Glasgow Coma Scale? Uh, that's a scale we use to determine a patient's uh, their consciousness. Basically, um, it uh, it grades uh, the vision, the eye response, verbal response, and motor response um, of the patient. It goes from three to fifteen. Fifteen being completely alert and awake, normal, and three is uh, unres completely unresponsive. Is that part of the, the triage process? Correct. Okay. Um, what was Mercedes? She was a three. And again, that meant she was? Completely unresponsive. <coughs> she was completely unresponsive. Correct. Okay. Um, what else is done in triage? Um, triage is basically gathering the complaint, whether they're um, and allergies, history, weight, uh, and we take into account why they're there to determine what their acuity level is. Okay. And so who was, um, were you doing the triage? Um, yeah, so normally it's done at the front by the triage nurse who assigns them a acuity level depending on how serious their condition is, and it tells us how fast we need to get them back or whether they can wait. Uh, in a situation like that, she was a uh, level one, meaning the life is at risk. Um, they bring them straight back, and it's all done. It's, we're basically doing it all at the same time. The triage, well, not initially. Initially, no, we're, we're not typing everything in. We're working on the patient, and after the fact, we complete the, the appropriate uh, uh, charting. Okay. So, um, what else as part of your, your care of Mercedes, um, did you um, have to um, um, sorry. <laughs> um, she was unresponsive. Correct. So so what treatment did you provide for Mercedes? Um, we took her into the room immediately. Uh, First thing is checking for um, ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. Um, notice there was no chest rise. Assume she wasn't breathing. Um, uh, checked her pulses. Um, and there were about two of us checking pulses, usually when there's a patient in that condition. Uh, there was no pulse. Okay. 
Um, so we started uh, chest compressions immediately. Um, and then in the process of trying to get a uh, circulatory access, IV access. Um, let me, I, uh, so, uh, so you, you checked. Right, the CPR, um, we were uh, trying to establish airway. Um, she had uh, mashed bananas in her mouth, which we had to um, take out. I digitally removed it so we could actually get access to her airway and start uh, giving her ventilations with a, with a VVM. Okay. Um, trying to establish IV access, which was nearly impossible. We ended up uh, attempting... Yeah, there were there was um, the veins weren't giving us any return. Okay. Can so you explain that to the jury. What does it mean that the veins weren't giving a return? So with the IV catheter, um, it has a chamber in it that gives when you hit the vein, it gives you a blood return, so you know you're in the vein and you can advance. Um, my nurses were putting it in and there was no blood return. Um, it, when there's lack of circulation. Some, that can happen. There's nothing coming back. And it's the pressure from the vein that pushes the blood in. Um, okay. you, Let me yeah. stop you there. You said a lack of circulation can cause that. Right. Um, was there anything else about Mercedes that led you to believe that her blood wasn't circulating? Um, in the initial moment when you're working on the patient, you're not noticing every condition of the patient. You're concentrating on trying to... Um, get them uh, breathing and, and get the pulse back. Um, however, notice her skin was already ashen. Um, I'm gonna jump to the narrative, Your Honor. This is strange. Um, her, you said her skin was ashy. Why is that um, relevant to you in your assessment? Um, pallor and ashiness is a sign of uh, poor uh, blood perfusion, so when there are, there's a pulse is lost, the patient's skin color changes because of the lack of blood perfusion. Okay. Um, how does the appearance of blood change? Um, depending on the time that they've been pulseless, um, the, the blood will darken because of the lack of oxygen. Um, so after, uh, they were failing to get a uh, proper IV access, we actually got access with, uh, an IO, which is an intraosseous. So it's a needle we push into the, the bone of the, below the knee, which, uh, is similar, uh, uh, not the best, but it's similar to start trying to get fluids, medications. Um, we didn't get any real blood return there. Um, I finally got IV access on the side of her neck, and uh, the blood return was 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 dark. It was very dark. It was very dark. And what did that tell you? Uh, it's unoxygenated blood. It's not oxygenated blood. Correct. And for us lay people, what does that mean? So, bright red blood is going to be in the arteries. That's going to be your oxygenated blood coming from the heart going to the body when it goes back in the veins whenever you got a cut on your finger or anything it, it's not as it's a little darker than oxygenated blood but it's still red the darker it is the less oxygen is in it okay. but, so does that have something to do with her heart function right if um there hadn't been any circulation going that means that none of the blood is passing by through the lungs to pick up oxygen so the body is using up whatever oxygen is there and it's depleting it so the blood is going to get darker. Okay. Um, you said you had worked at uh, Northeast Baptist Hospital. Mm -hmm. 
How far, uh, well, okay. um, you worked at Northeast Baptist, Correct. right? Um, how far away is that from where Texas East was? Um, at the time I lived about probably 10 minutes or seven, eight minutes a little f northeast of even Northeast Baptist, and it would take me about anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes to get to work. Okay. Were there other um, hospitals in the area? Uh, you have Northeast Methodist, you have Northeast Baptist. Um, I think. Uh, I, on the way there, there's also um, several, several um, urgent cares and um, and they might not be open, but they'll, they have, you have the standalone emergency rooms all the way through. show you what has been marked for identification purposes as state's exhibit number three. What is this? It's Mercedes Lasoya. It's Mercedes. Oh, is it a photo? Correct. Okay. Is this the little girl that you saw that day? Correct. Okay. <coughs> Was that a fair and accurate Yes. Your Honor, um, I would offer as evidence state's exhibit number three. No objection, Your Honor. All right, state's exhibit three is admitted without objection. Okay. Um, at this time, I will also offer state's exhibit number two, which was his report. Fine. Thank you. Is this just number two? No objection, Your Honor. State's exhibit number two is admitted without objection. Um, so at, at this time, your report is in evidence. Can you please read um, the narrative that you wrote? On 2822 at uh, 112, the child was brought in by mother at 1904. I took the child from the mother's hands, and that was my mistake. I, my memory was of the situation. It didn't happen so fast. I actually took it from my triage nurse's hands. Okay. Um, and I placed her in the room 12 directly behind them where they had come in. Child was pulseless, CPR begun immediately. Several rounds of high quality CPR and BVM assisted ventilations were given. Patient never regained. Excuse me, if you can slow down. I apologize. Um, okay, um, I placed her in room 12 directly behind them. Child was pulseless, CPR begun immediately. Several rounds of high quality CPR and BVM assisted ventilations were given. Patient never regained ROSC, which is uh, return of spontaneous circulation when we get a pulse back. And the code was called, meaning time of death was called. Uh, Dr. MD, Dr. Newton, called time of death at 1918, 718. Child was noticed to have generalized bruising over body, posteriorly and anteriorly, along with scratches, missing, missing areas of hair on head, wounds to her feet, and toenails missing on two toes of the left foot. Child had food still in her mouth on arrival. Per mom statement, she had been feeding the child when she passed out and hit her head on a lamp. Mom stated she propped up child to continue trying to feed her. SAPD was called during CPR due to appearance of the patient's body. CPS also involved. Investigations being conducted by SAPD and CPS. Postmortem completed. ME and route for child's body. Now, um, on the next page, the ED triage is assessment. Um, can you please read what the, the triage note says? Um, mother yelling for help in ER, child taken straight into room, no pulse, CPR started, child had chunks of food in mouth and generalized bruising was noticed on patient's body, bruising in different stages of healing, noticed several wounds to child's feet with toenails missing from two toes on left foot. Um, there's a note that says that bruising was in various stages of healing. Correct. What does that indicate? Um, that the bruising, the bruises were given, a, were caused at different days, weeks, maybe. I mean. Did you observe, if, if you remember, did you observe 
any injuries that looked like they had just occurred? There were newer bruises on her. I don't recall exactly where, but there were some that were darker than others. Are you able to determine timeline of bruises? Um, not exact timeline, but uh, object to the scrum. Overrules. Overrules. You can answer. Uh, question, but just answer the question that's asked for you. Correct. You cannot uh, exactly determine when, but you can differentiate between newer and older bruises. Okay. And, and newer could be within a week, the last week. Day a week, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know what rhabdomyolysis is? Yes, it's, um, I do. What is that? It's uh, when uh, muscle in the body starts to break down for, uh, there can be several reasons. Um, it breaks down and it ca can cause um, myoglobin, which is what muscles are made of. Um, it can go to the kidneys and cause kidney uh, failure, and it can increase your lactic acid in your blood, making your blood more acidic. Um, it can cause uh, nausea, vomiting, um, lethargy, malaise, and up to death. Okay. So it can, it can cause fatigue? Correct. It can cause nausea? Correct. And is malaise just another way to say fatigue? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, and is that something that will immediately lead to a coma, or is it something that take, takes time? Uh, it's progressive. Okay. If, if it goes untreated, it's progressive. I mean, it, it, it takes a few days or longer? It can, depending on um, the damage to the muscle. How much is there? And you said Mercedes had bruises all over her body. Correct. Um, is trauma like that something that can cause rhabdomyolysis? In Correct. Your objection, Your Honor, to the qualification of the witness to make the statement of what causes it. All right. Do you want to lay the foundation? Um, um, what is trauma? When you say trauma can... What, what do you mean? Trauma is um, any injury to the body um, from an outside force. Okay. And uh, had you seen, um, is rhabdomyolysis something that you have been seen diagnosed while you're in the ER? Many times, and I even had it mildly myself at one point. Okay. Um, and so you've seen cases where you knew that trauma. Objection to the your honor. Have you seen question, Have you seen cases of rhabdomyolysis for trauma was a contributing factor? Many times. Um, what else can um, be a factor for rhabdomyolysis? I mean, what else can cause it? Yes. Um, extreme amounts of exercise without proper hydration, dehydration, um, infection, um, metabolic issues. Somebody with uh, Defective liver. Um, and if rhabdomyolysis is left untreated, what organs of the body does it hurt? Objection, Your Honor. Cost for speculation. That would be overruled. You can answer the question. It's not established that you can have the expertise to answer that, Your Honor. That would be overruled. You can answer the question. Uh, well, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Um, what happens to the body if rhabdomyolysis is not treated? Um, so the release of the breakdown of muscle, the myoglobin, uh, can affect the kidneys. That's what they call it, uh, tea-colored urine. Your urine gets very dark, uh, decreasing urine production. Um, it can cause lactic acid release into the blood, making the blood more acidic. Um, and then all the symptoms we, we already mentioned, um, and eventually it can cause the heart to be unable to contract properly, reduces there, um, the, and the high level of acidity can uh, cause multiple organ uh, failure. Okay. Um, would you say that rhabdomyolysis is something that can be treated that someone that has rhabdomyolysis left untreated may have a substantial risk of death? Your Honor, down to witnesses' expertise. That would be overruled. Correct. 
Yes. Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I'm going to try this again. May I approach the witness? Yes. Okay. I hopefully this is better. This is, I've labeled this state's exhibit number four. Um, this is a, a new map. Okay. Can you, does this show uh, where Southwest General would be? Yes, it's going to be um, down to the south. Okay, can you mark that with an X for me? Approximately. Sorry. It's going to be approximately here in this, in this area. Okay. And I guess go ahead and circle it for me. Okay. Now, um, what other hospitals did you say um, were in the. Um, what what other hospitals did you say were in the area from Northeast Baptist to Southwest General? Um, you have Northeast Baptist a little further. Uh, and, and and this map indicates Northeast Baptist. Is correct. It, is that a correct location? Correct. Okay. Um, a little further east, you have Northeast Methodist. Can you mark maybe with? Mm, it's in generally near the live oak area around around there. Okay, you got a circle. Can you put maybe a line through it? And that's Northeast Methodist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you keep going further further down, um, SAMSI, the military medical hospital, is there. Okay. Um, you can. That's another one that they would not refuse a patient. Okay. Um, actually. Near Northeast, there's a standalone emergency room okay. that I actually work did part okay. time there. You put a circle there around okay. there, um, and I'm trying to think. Um, you pass. Um, you're also passing by the medical center, okay, which has countless hospitals. Can you uh, maybe just do a square around where the medical center would be? Yeah, sorry. Um, what about on the south side? Is there anything else? Any other medical center or hospitals you could think of on the south side? South side, um, uh, Mission Trail okay. Hospital, which is uh, here by Brook City Base. Okay. Uh, and um, there's also in the vicinity, um, there was, there's two um, Baptist standalone hospitals okay. hospitals as well okay. um, I don't remember the approximation uh, of those. that's okay and and um, it, it was your testimony that there was um, there are urgent care centers uh, urgent at that time of the night maybe not but definitely okay. there's San Antonio's opened up a ton of uh, small standalone ERs okay. and, that, and you brought up a good point what time of night was it I believe it was seven um, yes yeah, it was uh, it was seven seven p.m. Okay. Um. And this this map is just a true and accurate depiction of San Antonio. Correct. No objection, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would offer State's Exhibit Number Four. No objection, Your Honor. State's Exhibit Four is admitted. Your Honor, may I publish? Yes. Approximately, yeah. Or Texas Visa, right? This mm -hmm. general area. And then we have, would you say, Fort Sam? You have the medical center over here. You have uh, Northeast Baptist. You have Northeast Methodist. Or no, this was Northeast, Me Northeast Methodist. Which one was this? It was a standalone emergency room. Okay, it was just a standalone ER. Mm -hmm. So um, is it a fair assessment to say that there are more hospitals? in the northeast area than there are on the south side. Correct. Okay. And based on the condition of this child, um, how urgent 
Did she need medical care? She needed to go to the nearest facility. trauma front and back um, did you check her her mouth her, her facial area as part of your view? right initially to remove the food that was still in her mouth and then uh, after the fact um, during assessing the body um, did you see anything in her in her Mouth area, if you remember. In her mouth area, I don't remember exactly, but there was bruising okay. in the general area. Was there bruising on her face? I believe so. Okay. Um, did you notice anything about her hair? She had um, an area of her head that was missing hair. It looked like uh, it just—it was missing. Okay. Did you ever speak to the mother, Katrina Mendoza? I did not. Okay. Did you? Um, did you stay with Mercedes? I did. Okay. Um, what happened after Mercedes was declared deceased? Um, afterwards, um, we had we had called uh, SAPD and CPS who were on scene, and uh, the investigator for CPS was there, and. He needed to take pictures for investigation. So um, I was, it was my patient, and as a charge nurse, I w was in there and I was um, helping turn the body. I was turning the body so they could take the appropriate pictures. Okay. And then again for a SAPD's investigator. Did she have bruises? You said you turned her over. Did she have bruises on her backside? All the way down, yes. All the way down. Um, were they patchy, like one bruise and then another one? Um, How continuous was the bruising? Um, it, they were all pretty approximated, um, different conditions of healing. What would you refer to it as, as widespread? Correct. It covered her. Right. I'll pass it this Good morning, sir. My name is Teresa Connolly. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Did you know Mercedes had asthma? Was there anything about that in the admitting contract? No. Didn't know anything about it? Did not. You were first alerted to this, as I understand, by the sound of the mother yelling, save my baby? Uh, the mother was yelling, and my triage nurse was yelling. She was yelling to the nurse? Right, that she had a... Uh, a child that wasn't breathing. I'm sorry, what? That she had a child that wasn't breathing to let us know what that she was, was bringing. first response, that the child was not breathing. Is that correct? Uh, some, yes, along those lines, yes. When you touched the child, was she breathing? Um, when it, initially, when I grabbed her, I, I didn't, I wasn't assessing. I was t taking her to the room so we could lay her down and start working and, and make that assessment. In your report, you stated that she was cold. Right. What did that indicate to you? Um, that initially it can just indicates uh, that she's cold, but there was no way for me to know why until we started the assessment. Now, you said that, um, as I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, that you tried to take blood or, and or put an IV in the child. Is that correct? Correct. And as I understand it, you said that the, the blood that you took out was very dark. Correct. And where were you able to take that blood from? What part of Mercedes' body? There was, we finally got access on the right side of her neck. Right side of her neck. There was some comment in here about you had to go to her shin. Right. That was another attempt to gain uh, access. That's uh, 
intraosseous uh, access. It's a drill we put into the bone. Actually, a drill. And this was for the IV, wasn't it? Right. Especially with children, it's something we use commonly. Was she given any anesthesia before you drilled into her leg? No. Why not? Because it's a, the type of emergency situation it is, it's not required. Because she wasn't breathing, right? It's because of the she was, we were doing CPR. But she wasn't breathing? Correct. If she had been alive, would you have given her an anesthesia before you put a drill on her leg? Not necessarily. That's relevant. Not necessarily. Um, there are there are situations, especially when there's respiratory issues, that by protocol we can start an intraosseous on a child. Uh, what does that mean? I'm sorry. Intraosseous in, into the bone, the drill into the bone. That um, because of the situation and the why, why they're coming in, we can start it. And we don't generally use anesthesia when we start them. Um, but the majority of the time when we start them, the patient is not awake. Thank you. Um, my next notes say different stages of, of healing. Does that in regard to all the bruises? Correct. If any idea, can you estimate at all how old the oldest bruise might have been? Um, there's no way to tell exactly when or, wh or when it could have happened, but um, you can differentiate between older and newer by their color. Was, were there uh, black and blue traces or yellow traces or red? Do um, you remember any all of, of that? The, all of the above. All of the above. Now you said that you examined her various, um, various uh, eyes, nose, Do you notice anything particular about her eyes? Were they, did you open them and take a look? Uh, unresponsive. They were, oh, I'm sorry, not unresponsive. Uh, yes, unresponsive to light. Did they have any red specks in them? Uh, not that I recall. I don't, I don't recall. Um, we, if it's, uh, it's one of those things that's obvious when you look, but. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. It's that. one of those things that can, you, if you see, you know, you see it, we're, when we open the eyes, we're looking for the responses of the pupil. Weren't looking to see if the eye itself manifested anything, just whether it was not necessarily, not in that moment, no. <laughs> now there was food in her mouth, and you said, if I understand it correctly, if I'm wrong, that you had to pull it out to open her airwaves. Is that right? Correct. Would that have made a difference for an asthmatic to have blocked airways? Um. If she was having uh, an asthma attack, um, definitely would make it harder for them to try to take an air. But you have no information that she was having an asthma attack, do you? Right. And the problem with an asthma attack is that the blood doesn't get oxygen, is that correct? Uh, that can happen, correct. The airways close down and, and they can't take air in. Did you wonder why a mother was feeding a five-year-old child? Um, we, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, we try to, I mean, it's something that was stated and thought about, but it didn't think about that deeply. It was other things we were, we were doing. Did anybody ask her why she was feeding a five-year-old child? Um, that, I, that I recall, um, no, that I, not that I heard or that I recall. You mentioned with rhabdomyolysis that you actually had it yourself. I'm mild, mild form, case you of lived. <coughs> Right. Um, what was your experience with that? Did you have any experience with that? Good. I appreciate that. CPS? Yes. Overruled. Just answer the question. 
not what anybody said? Um, I did. Okay. Did they, um, as a result of your conversation with CPS, did you understand that they were familiar with this case? In fact, did they say? They didn't ask for hearsay. I said, all right, so everyone, stop talking over each other. Everyone make your legal objection and I'll make a ruling. And your objection is hearsay? It, it calls for hearsay. All right, and what is your response, counsel? All right, I didn't answer her say I said as a result of the conversation, what did he observe? You may answer that question. Can you be more specific? I, what did I observe as far? Any indication that they had been familiar with the case? Um, after the fact, um, after. Object, object, All right, so counsel, re ask your question. As a result of your conversation with CPS, do you recall that they indicated a familiarity with Mercedes' case? Not initially. But at some point? Correct. Thank you. Anybody else? No further questions. Pass the witness. Um, one final question, if you can answer it. Um, how quickly, once um, the heart stop circulating, how how quickly does it take for um, the blood to become dark like that? What kind of time frame? It's uh, not easy to say, um, but it can take a little bit of time because there's still going to be oxygen in the blood for a... Sure, I'm going to cause some speculation on, the, on his part. If, is there a, like a minimum time? I'm not necessarily in how far it can possibly go, but a minimum. Is it going to be um, more than five minutes? More than five minutes, correct. Okay. Um, is it going to be more than ten minutes? Most likely. Um, the cause of death that you have on your records there indicates cardiac arrest. Is that correct? Uh, that's not, uh, we're not determining cause of, of death. We're determining her state when she comes in. Her, I'm sorry. Her, her condition when she comes in. Cardiac arrest is on there. What is the title of the place where cardiac arrest is written on that report? Um, what page are we on? Unable to respond, reason, is that what we're talking about? So there's a part here where uh, during the triage um, where it's asking questions, different kinds of questions, general questions we ask all the patients and when we say that they're unable to respond, we have to ask why, we have to say why. And the answer was? Cardiac arrest. Thank you. arrest um, can be and determine and there could be a, a but yet the, the M, it's the ME's job to determine what caused the cardiac arrest Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More all right is this witness excused or subject for recall he's excused mm -hmm. from the state or anybody no he's excused from the defense your honor. all right the rule has been invoked what that means is that you're not allowed to discuss your testimony with anyone 
you're not allowed to view anything about this case. Do you understand? Correct. Yes. All right, you may step down. State, call your next witness. State calls Ryan Cahill. If you'll leave the exhibits, please. Oh, no problem. No problem. All right, you'll take a seat here, please. Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand, have a seat. Make sure you keep your voice up so members of the jury and the court reporter can hear. Yes, ma'am. You'll state your name for the record. Ryan Cahill. State. Yes, uh, I was formerly Officer Cahill with the San Antonio Police Department. Thank you. Uh, and you no longer work for San Antonio Police Department, is that correct? Correct. Uh, when did you stop working for San Antonio Police Department? Uh, about the middle of 2022. Okay. Uh, last summer? What? Yes. Okay. Um, and when did you start your career with San Antonio Police Department? Uh, about the summer of 2017. Um, a little under five years, I believe. Okay, so we're both out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, tell the jury, um, well, I'm sorry, prior to working with the San Antonio Police Department, did you have any uh, previous uh, law enforcement experience? Yes, uh, I was with the uh, U.S. Army for about eight years as a military police canine officer. Correct, yes. I was uh, released early from the military to be able to join SAPD. Okay. And can you tell the jury about your career with SAPD? Yes, um, I was with SAP for a little under five years. Um, I worked on South Patrol um, as a patrol officer. Uh, about a year before I left, I was certified as a field training officer, and I performed as a field training officer for that final year of uh, my service there. Okay, I'm going to back you up a little bit. You mentioned South Patrol. What is South Patrol? Uh, so basically, we uh, patrol the southern part of San Antonio. Um, you know, kind of goes all the way from the west to um, pretty much the east side, but that whole southern southern section, um, basically below the median line of San Antonio. Okay. And what shift did you typically work? Uh, it was T shift. Uh, we went in at 5 p.m. We would get out at about 3 in the morning. It was, uh, um, they called it like a power shift that would overlap the busiest times of the day to assist the other shifts. Um, it's kind of the, the more active times of the day. Okay. And you talked about being a field training officer. What duties do you have as a field training officer? Uh, so as an FTO, uh, my primary duty is to assist the probationary officers with their training and tr their transitions to becoming a full-time independent officer on their own. Um, what I do is I primarily uh, review their reports, watch them while they're at the calls. If there's anything that they need assistance with or they're struggling with, that's when I'll kind of step in, um, kind of make sure that nothing goes anywhere it shouldn't go. If there's something that they haven't experienced before, uh, they're not struggling with it and kind of assist them through the calls um, with whatever, um, who, were, who were there to help needs and uh, any questions that they have. So basically you're training new officers? Correct. Okay, so I wanna kinda talk about that a little bit more. Just in general, um, what training does an officer go through when becoming a, a full-fledged officer with San Antonio Police Department? Um, so, after you go through the academy, um, which is several months long, then you're going to have a three-month period where you'll spend uh, at, in the FTO program as a probationary officer. You're rotated through three FTOs. Um, you'll spend one month with each FTO. You'll be at different substations around the city, so that way you kind of get exposure to all different uh, environments and different types of calls and things like that. At the end of your three-month period, 
You'll spend two weeks in evaluations with two other officers that you have no experience with uh, who are also FTOs, and they'll evaluate you over those two weeks uh, based off of a, a rating scale, and then you have to pass that. If you pass that, you'll be certified as a full officer to be able to work independently on your own. If you don't pass it, you'll go back into remedial training. You'll basically do another month or whatever is needed with additional FTOs until you're able to pass your uh, certification. Okay. And so specifically focusing on the FTO portion that you talked about where they are with three different field training officers, are there different phases and levels to that training that they go through? Yes, there is. There's uh, three phases, and uh, kind of the point of the three phases is to give them more responsibility as time goes on, um, being that... You know, they just got out of the academy, they have a lot of the um, textbook experience, but they don't have a lot of the interactive real world experience because um, it's hard to train that in the academy. So we're kind of, it's almost a handoff, if you will, um, as far as giving them more and more responsibility as they go. And are you, or were you, um, a certified peace officer? Yes. Okay, so are you currently still, or? Yes, currently for this year, um, my certification will lapse if I don't complete the uh, required t -cold courses by the end of the year. Okay, and just why did you leave San Antonio Police Department? Um, Your Honor, I've got your relevance. How is this relevant? I, I mean, Judge, I, I want to make sure uh, he left on good terms. All right, the objection is sustained. Um, were you working as a San Antonio police officer on February 7th of 2022? Yes, I was. At that point in time, were you training anyone? Yes, I was. Who were you training? Uh, officer Lacerio. What phase of her training was she in? I believe she was in third phase. And a little bit more than what we've already talked about, what, what does third phase fully mean? So the third phase, um, what I typically do and most FTOs do in third phase is we're mostly giving the probationary officer the full independence at the calls and we're kind of just a um, secondary kind of, we fill more of a, a cover officer role um, unless there's just something that we need to step in for um, or something they haven't encountered in their previous phases. Um, but pretty much at that phase, they're mostly uh, operating on their own. On February 7th, um, were you dispatched to a case involving a Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, I was. Where were you dispatched to? Uh, at the time, it's called Texas Vista Hospital. Okay. Why do you say at the time? Um, it changed its name several times, and then now it's currently, uh, as far as I know, no longer in operation. Okay. Um, why were you dispatched to Texas Vista? Uh, we were dispatched for a DOA of a child. What is DOA? Um, basically means that the um, individual was brought in unresponsive or was found un unresponsive at some point and is basically um, believed to be or has been pronounced deceased. Okay, and in fact, what does DOA stand for? Uh, dead on arrival. Uh, and so, it, tell me, when you, you have a field training officer, how, how does that look? Do you ride together? Do you ride separately? Yes, uh, we ride together um, and as I said, I kind of perform as a cover officer, kind of um, doing what she needs and just kind of he or she, um, and then kind of helping them out with whatever they may need or stepping in if needed. Um, but we're pretty much uh, always attached because it is my responsibility as the FTO to make sure that nothing does happen that shouldn't happen and make sure that I'm watching over that officer as well. Okay, so is it fair to say that uh, everything that you're saying you did that day, you did with Officer Lothario? Correct. Um, what happened when you arrived to Texas Vista? Um, immediately upon arrival, um, we got a, a briefing from the uh, staff there um, who told us that there I'm was... Gonna I'm going to stay. I'm going to stop you real quick. Uh, you're not allowed to talk about what people told you. Okay. So you got a briefing, and without saying what they told you, what did you do next? Okay. Um, I got a briefing um, from that. We went to the room where uh, Mercedes' mother was located. Um, we made contact with her, and then... Let's stop you real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said Mercedes' mother. Do you remember her name? Yes, Katrina. Do you remember her last name? Katrina Mendoza. Okay. Um, and so, <laughs> while talking to her, just what was her demeanor? Uh, so, her demeanor was... 
she was, in my opinion, in my experience um, with talking to a lot of individuals and a lot of interviews, uh, she was attempting to appear very upset. Um, but I do not feel, based off my experience, that she was legitimately um, upset that it, it appeared that she was, uh, by my experience, it appeared that she was more forcing um, the emotions rather than truly feeling the emotions. Okay. Um, how long did you talk to Katrina Mendoza? Um, it was several times that we kind of went in and out of the room with different things. Um, if I had to put a time um, total, um, maybe a total time about an hour or so, um, broken up over different time periods. Okay. So this initial time that you're talking to her, who was all in the room? Um, at the time, it was just me, Officer Lacerio, and Katrina. And there, at one point in the beginning, um, the doctor that uh, pronounced the deceased was in the room, um, but that was just at the beginning. Katrina has any other children? Yes, I did. And um, how many other children does she have? Um, at the time, I was aware of one. Okay. Do you know that other child's name? Jordan. Okay. Did this cause you any concerns? Uh, yes, definitely. And what were your concerns? Uh, my concerns was, at that time, um, I had observed uh, Mercedes's body at that point and saw the extent of the injuries and the condition of her. Um, and based off that, it immediately um, caused a high concern for me that if there's any other children involved, that we needed to immediately get them into custody because if they were in any um, potential danger to what it appeared Mercedes had gone through, then uh, we needed to try and get them to safety as soon as possible. I'm showing you what's been admitted as State's Exhibit 3. Um, is this the condition you saw Mercedes in that night? Yes, it is. Um, can you take a minute and just, in your own words, describe what you saw Mercedes looking like? Yes. Um, when I went in um, and saw Mercedes, she, at the time, was um, covered with an apron. Um, when I pulled back the apron, um, the injuries that she had sustained were clearly not something that um, under any circumstances could have ever been perceived as accidental. Um, it was extensive injuries that were over multiple uh, lengthy periods of time. Um, she was covered from head to toe, her whole body in bruises, significant bruising. Um, a large majority of her hair had been uh, removed from her head. Um, she had what appeared to be uh, burn marks on her feet. Um, I was informed that she um, had a soft spot on her skull, and um, it was basically uh, there, there was there was no possibility that um, this wasn't a long. Yes. Yes. Due to that concern, what did you do? Um, at that time, um, we went and I, I talked with Katrina um, and was able to gain the information that um, her, at the time, she uh, said boyfriend um, was in custody of the other child. And due to the extensive injuries that I observed on Mercedes, and the possibility of, uh, we didn't know who at that time had caused these injuries. Um, I wanted to try and get both um, her boyfriend and the child to the hospital uh, so we can make contact with them and take custody of the child. Um, and then Katrina called. Okay. I'm gonna call you. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So you said boyfriend. Did you learn who her boyfriend was at the time? Yes. Who was that? Uh, Jose Ruiz. Yes. 
Yes, I did. Do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you identify him by an article of his clothing? Yes, he's uh, wearing a blue jacket. Okay. Let the record reflect he has identified the defendant. Um, okay. I, I believe you mentioned asking Katrina about Jordan. Yes. Um, she uh, used her phone and made a phone call. Okay. Um, on this phone call, what was her demeanor? Uh, at, at first, she was um, trying to um, coordinate with the other individual on the end of the phone, and then she became extremely agitated and irate, um, and began yelling and, and screaming. Okay. Um, and did that continue for the remainder of the phone call? Yes, it did, and after. Yes. Uh, oh, um, in your work as a San Antonio police officer, do you wear a body camera? Yes, I do. Okay, and we've talked about Officer Lothario. Was she also wearing a body worn camera? Yes, she was. Are those um, in use while you are at a call? Yes. Yes, it's uh, required by our policy that the uh, moment we get the call or we're going to make contact with any individual of the public, um, that the body warm cam is activated and it remains activated until we complete that interaction. How do body warm cameras get logged? Um, so the, when we activate them, we deactivate them at the end of the day. Um, we put the body warm cameras into their charging docks. They're automatically uploaded into the servers and then they're stored in the servers. And how are they connected to a case? I'm sorry, say that again? How are they connected to a case? Um, so they're usually connected to the case by um, time frame. It's a, um, basically the system tries to say this officer, which is your body cam, is, is basically attached to you as the officer. Um, this officer was on these calls during this time, and that camera would be attached to the calls that you were on during that time. Okay. Is it fair to say that you don't have to attach it, the system does it automatically? Yes. Okay, I'm showing you what I've marked as States Exhibits 5 and 6. Do you recognize those? Yes, I do. How do you recognize them? Through, uh, these are my initials and the date that I wrote on them. Okay, have you had opportunity to watch both of these prior to coming to court today? Yes, I have. And are they uh, portions of your body-worn camera from February 7, 2022? Yes. Are they fair and accurate depictions of the events that occurred that day? Yes, they are. Um, one of them is from mine, and then the other one is from Lucero's when we're standing together. Okay, and I'm sorry, you already said that. So I'm going to clarify, State's Exhibit 5, is that whose body camera is that from? That is from Officer Lucero's. Okay, and y you already testified you've watched this in its entirety before coming to court today. Yes, I have. Were you present for the entirety of this video? Yes.
want to get the pasta out here. Well, no, 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 that's not what I mean. I I we have little and she's already requested more. We just had a recording the other day. Oh, okay. Are you requesting more? Oh, okay. Why don't you put the other all the sauces in? Okay. Not yet. Well, we could mix it. Because each steak is different. Yeah, right. Well, I don't think we can put the fish in there until like half an hour from now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cuz it's gonna take longer to cook. I think it's this mic right here. Mic check. One, two, three, four. Mic check. This one right here. Okay.
Oh, please be seated. We stand for you. <laughs> All right, everyone, you may be seated. All right, state and studio witness. Thank you, Judge. At this time, state would offer an evidence previously tendered to defense exhibit 6A. Any objections? No, Your Honor. All right, state's exhibit number 6A is admitted without objection. May we publish to the jury, Judge? Yes. On this video, I've made contact with uh, Jose, and um, I'm basically asking him uh, what information he has about the incident or anything involved with uh, what we're there investigating. Hey, how's it going, sir? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Jose. Jose? Okay. So you know everything that's going on with everything well, here? Uh, I know a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to just step out and tell me, I guess, what's going on? I, I honestly don't want to be involved because, just because, like, honestly. I, I understand you know that. I, yeah, I understand you don't want to be involved. I mean, that's... I have to step out? I'm yeah, you. just because I just want to talk to you out here. I'm <laughs> you know, I don't know you or anything. You don't know me or anything like that. We're just going to talk here. Just like I'm talking with everyone here, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on right now. Okay. You just leave it here, it's fine. Okay. No, you can leave it here, it's fine. Hey, hey, you can, no, it's all right. You can leave it here. Dude, we got to block your front. <laughs> Because I just got my apartment, I didn't want to live on it. So okay. I had, you know, okay. 
So you didn't really see the kids for a few days now. Yeah. What was the last time you saw them prior to today? Um, Okay. And how were they doing? They were doing good. Like two days ago, she was doing good too. I saw her. They weren't sick at all or anything like that. She was. She wasn't sick, but she was like, like fatigued, like getting sick. Like you could tell she was like getting sick. I guess. Did she have like any injuries or anything like that? Not that. Not that I know. She was walking fine, talking fine, everything. Like you can ask her. She she was really talking. She told me yesterday. She was fine. She was eating, talking, and everything. Okay. And then I'm guessing the shit got in the Just give me one second. Okay. So, so three days ago or something like that, I guess is the last time you saw her, right? Yeah, like two, three days ago. Okay. She and then... And then she was telling me she saw her last night, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And she was fine. Like, she was walking fine, eating fine, good. Everything was good. Yeah. So then today, what, what changed? Like, how did it... Oh, I don't happen? know. She was calling and telling me, you need to come on my land. Mm -hmm. She just said you need to come. And I was like, I haven't come and then I saw it when I showed up yesterday. So you were like, well, what do you mean I'm running and come running? No, no, no. Like, what's going on? no. But she, she was like, she sounds scared, you know, so I didn't even ask her. Yeah, where was she at? I was in the room. She was at the house. At the friend's house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she was at the friend's house and she was like, you need to come here. Yeah. So you, and the friend lives in an apartment, the same apartment okay. complex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, same apartment complex. You walked over there, I'm assuming? No, I was, I was on the street. I was at the middle of that street. Oh, okay. So you drove back to the apartment yeah, complex? Yeah, I drove over there. Okay, and when you pulled up to the apartment complex, yeah. what was going on? She was like, like having trouble breathing, like just laying there. Like, she was conscious and everything. She was just having trouble breathing, that's all. Okay. And, and, and she was fine. We got her fine. Like, I was over in the bed, chatting her, like, working her, and then she was fine. And what was her mother saying? Uh, nothing. We were just having in the situation. Like, she was fine. Can, hey, can you just stand by the table? You just give me one second. I just got to talk to you. Uh... Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going, sir? Yeah. Uh, what's your All right, Officer Cahill, was that the extent of you talking to Jose that evening? Uh, no. The full extent of us talking? Um, I mean, I believe we did have more conversations throughout the night. Um, for the remainder of the night, um, we were in contact with Jose, and then um, eventually when we were transporting him as well. Okay. Uh, with what we just heard, um, Jose told you, and based on your training and experience, was <clears throat> what he told you consistent with Mercedes' condition and how you saw her? No, it was not. And why do you say that? Um, uh, a lot of the descriptions that he was using, um, as far as her being fine, um, multiple times saying she was fine, the injuries that I saw. Um, the injuries that I saw um, were not something that had happened within a three-day period um, where he had said the last time that he was with her was three days ago. Um, these were injuries that were far beyond three days. Um, and the condition that she was in and those injuries, um, which were very apparent to be much farther past three days, um, myself, I would never be able to look at a child in that condition and ever describe them as fine. Going back to what Jose had told you, um, did he in fact describe um, an illness or something of the sorts that he had seen within those last three days? Yes, he described her as fatigued. Jordan had lived with him, if you remember. 
He said uh, approximately a month. Um, based on your training and experience, did you find that his answers were consistent to you? Oh, no, I object to speculation. I will. Uh, based on my training experience, no, I did not feel like his answers were consistent. Yes, he was being cooperative. And he responded to your questions, correct? Yes, he did. And uh, there was no, uh, you had no difficulty with him in that interaction, correct? Um, I mean, not what we saw, was there any? From what you saw, no. trying to give the appearance that she was crying. And, but in fact, her demeanor was um, sort of, uh, do you see anger? And uh, like, did you, was she angry? Did she have a hot temper, did it appear to you? The uh, anger I saw was in her conversation with Jose. Um, but it, she was aggressive, correct? When they were interacting, yes. Um, and she, that your based on your interaction with her, she was evasive in the information she was giving you, right? I wouldn't say invasive. I wouldn't say invasive um, answering the question, uh, but I would say that I would. I didn't believe that she was giving me the whole story. That she was. I, I believe she was telling me her version of something, but I yes. But she was. Self-serving. Would you agree? Self-serving. I'm not objecting. Not a basic thing. Um. Her demeanor was. Um, I don't know if I could say it surprised me. Um, as an officer, we kind of have to be ready to encounter whatever we're going to encounter in the situation. Um, it, it uh, I guess as opposed to surprising me, it raised flags that I um, needed to investigate this situation a lot more. Yes, about the situation, yes. But you had never met Katrina before that night, correct? Correct. Nor had you ever met Jose before, correct? Correct. I'll pass the witness at this time. Um, Officer Cahill, you just talked about No, I believe they were both lying. Uh, Your Honor, I would uh, object 
to opinion and hearsay. And ask, the, uh, ask for a ruling on my objection and the jury be instructed to disregard. Judge, I believe she opened the door. All right, the parties approach. The objection is sustained. Ladies and gentlemen, you're disre to disregard that last answer. All right, stay. Officer Cahill, did Jose show any concern for Mercedes? I don't believe so. with Jose. Um, I believe you've already answered this, but what was Katrina's demeanor during that phone conversation? Um, so she started off by um, basically trying to follow what I was asking her to do to have the child brought to the hospital. Um, there was a discussion about the phone, and as soon as the discussion about... Your Honor, I would object to the hearsay. Um, at one point, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Once an objection is made, I'll yes. make a ruling. I'll make a ruling. If you don't understand my ruling, just let me know. I sustain the objection, so they're going to ask you another question. Just tell me about No. That's your next question. Well, Judge, at this time, I believe defense, by talking about um, the phone conversation between Katrina and Jose, has opened the door. We'd like to reoffer State's Exhibit 5 under excited utterance. All right, that objection will be, well, I'm sorry, do you have any objection to that? Yes, I do have an objection to that because um, I, I don't believe that door has been opened. I don't believe that's the kind of thing that could open the door. All right, outside of the door not being open, which is what you're saying, what are your other objections or do you have other objections? Yes, I have other objections. First of all, I didn't ask about the contents of the conversation, just the de her demeanor. Uh, so I want to be clear about that. And um, I believe it's hearsay, irrelevant, and prejudicial. All right. The objection to hearsay will be sustained. I'll pass the witness. Nothing further, Your Honor. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? She's excused from the state. Subject to recall, Your Honor. All right. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. You're not allowed to do anything. One of the parties may call you back, so make sure you're available. And, and Judge, he is an out, out of, he lives out of state. Right. So one of the wit one of the parties may call you back. Make sure you're available. Okay. All right. Thank you. Call your next witness. State calls Julie Rummel. If you'll take a seat here, please. Okay. Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. Julie Rommel. All right, make sure you keep your voice up so that the members of the jury and the court reporter can hear. Yes, State. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Romo. Good afternoon. Can you please spell your last name for the court reporter? R-U-M-M-E-L. How are you currently employed? I'm uh, employed with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice as a captain. What do you do? Um, I run a shift, run a unit in Hondo, Texas. How long have you been doing that? I started in 2011 left for Child Protective Services and then came back in August of 2022. So you said you left for Child Protective Services. 
Yes, yeah. ma'am. Uh, how long did you work with Child Protective Services? Uh, I believe two and a half years. Um, is that, were you working with Child Protective Services in February of 2022? Yes, ma'am. What were your duties back then? Um, I would investigate all cases. I was on the night unit. We'd be working from Tuesday through Friday from 1 p.m. to midnight. Uh, and we, I would investigate all the cases that came in that I was assigned by my supervisor. Um, how did those cases, like how did those cases come into CPS to the court you're gonna send an investigator? Uh, it depends. Uh, the hospital would call in the case, law enforcement or concerned citizens. Um, what kind of steps did you, or what things did you do as a CPS investigator? As a CPS investigator, I would investigate all types of cases from uh, neglect all the way up to child fatalities. How would you, do you go about investigating kind of like police officers do? Like what steps do you take to? to uh, first I would interview uh, family members, friends close to the family, uh, collaterals which we'd, uh, which our friends, contacts of the family would give us and also uh, make sure the children were safe. Um, and during your time um, as an investigator, you said that you worked kind of like a shift that lasted like all kind of like afternoon and evening up to midnight. That's correct, ma'am. Um, back on February 7th, 2022, uh, were you sent uh, anywhere regarding a child by the name of Mercedes Lasoya? I was. I, sent, I was sent to a, a hospital. I can't remember the name of the hospital, though. Does Texas Vista sound familiar? Yes. Okay. And is that here in San Antonio? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do you know if the hospital is still operating? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so when you were dispatched, uh, were you told what kind of call it was? or? I was informed <laughs> it was a child fatality. What happened when you first got to the hospital? Who did you first make contact with? I first made contact with, uh, I believe, the officer and that was watching over Jordan, the sibling of Mercedes. And then I made contact with the medical personnel as well to find out uh, the logistics of everything that occurred, that way I can contact my supervisor. Okay. And kind of what's the purpose of, kind of getting all that initial information from people? Um, in a case like that, it was to meet with the district attorney so we could file for a removal of Jordan from the mother. Um, so at that night, uh, did you also see Mercedes? I did. Did you see her before or after you spoke to her sister, Jordan? After. When you came in, uh, do you know about what time you got to the hospital? Was it late at night? I know it was evening time and it was already dark, but I don't know exactly what time. Um, what was your primary purpose for being at the hospital that night? My <laughs> primary purpose was to ensure that Jordan was safe that night. Um, when you made contact uh, with Jordan, um, was she there at the hospital? She was. Um, what types of things do you do when talking to a child like Jordan to make sure they're okay? Um, I talk to them. I get down on their level to make sure that they feel safe and secure with me first before uh, we take any further steps because if they don't feel safe and secure with us, then uh, you know they might be more hesitant to go with us. Uh, I ensured that she was doing okay and she was uh, seen by medical personnel as well. Um, how long were you able to I don't recall. Okay. Um, do you recall how old she was? I want to say s about six, if I recall correctly. What was her demeanor at that point when you talked to her? Um, she was still her happy self. She wasn't aware of anything that occurred yet. Um, so she was still happy, very talkative. Uh, we made sure we got her some food and made sure she ate that evening and then, you know, got her in a safe place that night. Um, did you or the medical personnel inspect her for injuries? Yes. Um, did she have any injuries? That you no, observed? not that I observed. Um, how did she present in terms of clothing and appearance? She appeared clean from what I remember. Uh, she, uh, I believe the hospital gave her a stuffed animal if I remember correctly. But as far as her demeanor, she was well nourished and clean. And you said that at some point that night you also uh, viewed Mercedes' body, correct? I did. Um, may I approach her? Yes. I'm going to show you an already been marked.
marked and admitted as States Exhibit 3. Um, is this Mercedes in that photo? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and is this how she appeared when you were viewing her in the hospital that night? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit number 7. Um, do you recognize the two girls in this photograph? Yes, that's Mercedes and Jordan. Okay. Um, is this a fair and accurate representation of what Jordan especially looked like back then? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you recognize both children? Yes, ma'am. They would offer State Exhibit 7, I think. The girl on the left, that's, who's that? That's Jordan. Okay, and then the girl in the middle, who's that? That's Mercedes. Okay. Is Jordan older or younger than Mercedes? She's oh. older. She's older. Do you know by how much? I want to say give or take two years. Um, and you said that she at that point did not know what it that's correct. Um, when you went in and saw Mercedes, what was the condition of her body? Uh, it was very bruised, teeth missing, toenails missing. Uh, there were little like thumbtack wounds on the bottom of her feet as well, uh, clumps of hair missing. Uh, it was very, very bad. Would it be safe to say those were extensive injuries? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was there anybody else from CPS with you that night? There was. It was Special Investigator Anthony Adame. And was he doing the investigation with you? Yes, we were running it together. Uh, I guess I would. I was the one that would have to close out the case and everything. But you two work together. Correct? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. And was he also in the room uh, with you when you interviewed Jordan? I don't recall. Was he in the room with you when you observed Mercedes? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you guys have to take photographs? Yes, ma'am. And were you in the room when those photographs were taken? I was the one taking the photographs. Yes. Okay. Do you remember, um, did you speak to anybody else that night about what had happened? Did you speak to Katrina or Jose or anyone else that night? I believe I spoke to her dad, if I remember correctly, and her stepmom outside of the hospital. Katrina's dad and stepmom? Yes. Okay. What was the next step in the investigation you guys did? Uh, we filed for the removal of Jordan. I placed her in a home and then set Jordan up for a forensic interview. So tell the jury what a forensic interview is. A forensic interview is uh, conducted at Child Safe, where there's special uh, interviewers that know exactly what questions to ask uh, regarding severe cases, uh, one similar like this. So it's conducted by a, a different person, the one who does the interviewing. That's correct, ma'am. Uh, are you guys in the room when the kids are interviewed? No, ma'am. Okay. How? What do you guys do? Uh, uh, the we're watching over a video. Uh, kind of like a zoom but it's just a video from one room to the other and what is child safe child safe is a place where they conduct interviews with uh, any anywhere from ranging from a sexual abuse case to child fatality case uh, more severe cases where an investigator with CPS would not be conducting the interview um, is to your knowledge is child safe um, an investigative entity or is it more neutral uh, it's neutral and so you said that you've got Jordan scheduled for a forensic, correct? Correct, ma'am. Um, do you recall when that interview took place? I do not. Okay. Would it have been in the next day or so after this? That's correct. Um, after you arrived at the hospital and spoke to Jordan, uh, did Jordan have any further contact with her mother or with Jose Ruiz? 
She did not. So she was removed immediately that night? Yes, ma'am. And immediately placed in TPS as care? That's correct, ma'am. After the forensic interview, um, you said you watched it, correct? Yeah, that's correct, ma'am. Okay. What is the next step that you took? Uh, we were trying to find family members that would have been suitable to place Jordan in and continue to ensure that she was safe uh, in where she placed where she was placed um, do you recall if you went anywhere else as part of your investigation to anyone's house or apartment I did go to a couple family members house and then where she was placed with her I want to say her great great aunt I went to her house and conducted a uh, interviews with her and her mother I believe to ensure that was going to be safe took pictures of the home and then we got that process so we could place Jordan with a family member uh, at any point in time did you go uh, to someone's house by the name of Jeanette yes that's correct uh, who was Jeanette Jeanette was the friend of Katrina in the same apartment complex where they where they end up rushing Mercedes to the hospital from that apartment, saying stating that she fell in that apartment. What's the purpose of going to Jeanette's apartment? I'm trying to locate an additional source of who last saw Mercedes alive. Um, were you ever able to speak to Katrina? Uh, we spoke to her, Mr. Adame and I both spoke to her briefly uh, before before she was arrested, I believe, at SAPD headquarters. When you spoke to her, uh, what was her demeanor? Uh, she was still calm and asking when she could see Jordan. Did she seem more concerned with Jordan than Mercedes? That's correct, ma'am. Did you ever speak to Jose at all? I did not. Okay. Do you know if uh, your partner Jose Adame did? I believe he did. I did all the way, I believe, for another three or four months afterwards. Um, were you invested or is that normal uh, to kind of keep up with? Uh, I think I was personally invested as well to make sure she was doing safe, especially after that traumatic incident. Uh, because I, you know, me and Mr. Adame did have to inform her that her sister passed. So you and Mr. Adame were the ones that had to tell her that Mercedes had passed? Yes, ma'am. We did that right before her child safe interview. I did. She came and gave me a big hug and, you know, mentioned something that her sissy was no longer in pain and walking the golden streets. So she I'm knew. Sorry, I didn't understand that. What did you say? Uh, Jordan stated that her sissy's no longer in pain and walking the golden streets. Correct, ma'am. Okay, and what was your result of that? Indeed, there was a child fatality, is that correct? Yes, there was a child fatality, ma'am. Do you make any recommendations as to charging? As far as charging? The crime. No, ma'am. Had you ever met Mercedes before this incident? No, ma'am. Were you familiar with the situation there? No, I was not. You made a comment, I believe, that Jordan, subsequent to the visit at the hospital, was her happy self. Yes, ma'am. How would you know it was her happy self? Uh, just because afterwards, from what I observed of her demeanor uh, throughout the whole investigation, the next three or four months. So it was a retrospective. 
correct, ma'am. Thank you. Well, and you, I believe you said that Jordan was three years older, in your opinion? I, two. Two? Yes. Now, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I can make mistakes when I hear, um, you said that she did not know what happened. That's correct. Why did she not know? Did you ask her at the time what happened? Just speculation. speculation. Overruled. Uh, I could not disclose any of the incident yet because she had to be uh, interviewed by Child Safe. So, but at that that particular night at the hospital, you did not interview. Jordan. That's correct. I did not. I'm sorry because you had said that you interviewed Jordan. So. That's the, uh, that's the steps we take in the interview process, but regarding a severe case like this, we weren't allowed to interview. All right, thank you. You did take photos, though. Correct. And you spoke with the dad and stepmom of Katrina. Yes, I believe so, if I recall correctly. And was that probably to find out if they could take Jordan? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, you set up the, child, the forensic interview at Child Safe. Were you the one who took her to Child Safe? I was. And did you watch the interview? I did. And what did, how did she begin the interview with what happened that day? I'm going to object to hearsay. Sustained. I'd like to show the video. Um, do you want to introduce it? Yeah, I'd like to introduce the video from the child safe interview. Is there going to be any objection? Not from the state, Your Honor. All right, then. If you'll mark it as an exhibit. This, I guess, would be defense exhibit one, but we're not allowed to have it, right? No, because the state was saying that they're not objecting. But we're not allowed to have a copy of it. Well, it'll be in the in court's evidence. possession. In evidence. Should I have it marked as D1 or state's one? Or That's one. That's the defense one. Exhibit number one into evidence. No. Any objections to defense exhibit number one? No, Your Honor. And are both parties saying that defense exhibit number one is the child safe statement of Jordan? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then defense exhibit number one is admitted, admitted without objection. Do you want us to publish it? Please.
Sustained. And so the cameras are here to help us remember the things that you and I. Okay. Well, what's the first thing you did after you woke up in the morning? 
Has something happened that you're here today? No. Okay. Are you worried about something that might have happened? My sister. Your sister? Tell me everything you're worried about. Mm, I miss my sister. Tell me more about that. Mm. Tell me more about your sister. She ate a lot of food. Okay. And then that's how she got sick. Tell me everything about the way that she got sick. She got sick from eating yogurt, three yogurt. And she ate bananas, smushed up, okay. and soup. Okay. And then she only drank one. Well, what helps you know that she, that she got sick? Because my mom was feeding her, and then she stuck the spoon in her mouth, and then she accidentally struck it right here, and, and then my mom uh, pulled it out, and then she fell on the floor and hit her head on the metal thing. Now, is this something that you saw, something that you heard, or something else? Something that I saw. Okay. Now uh, tell me, you said your mom was feeding her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell me everything that happened step by step. Just how we practiced earlier about your, you coming here and your day, okay? Tell me everything that happened. My mom was feeding her and then she hit her head on the light bulb and it was metal. Okay, then what happened? And then she fell on the floor and then she hit her head. And then she went to the hospital, and then uh, her friend took me to her house. Okay. You said her friend took you to her house. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? And then I stayed there, and then I went to the hospital with my mom, and I never saw my mom again. What's your mom's name? Katrina Mendoza. So here's the thing, when an objection is made, I will respond to the objection. That's what I'm here for. No sidebars. You can answer the question if you know the answer. I didn't, she was already, I, my main goal was to remove Jordan at that night. Her main goal was what? To remove Jordan that night, to make sure she was safe. But she said in this interview that an action was taken against Mercedes by her mother. Did you do anything about that? I'm not the one to charge any parents. The answer is no? That's correct. Did you report it to anybody? Yes, it was in my investigation. Do you have it there with you? No, I don't. Prior to this interview that you took Jordan to, did you interview files on this family? I believed I looked at some of the history before going out. And what do you recall about some of the history? Uh, there was an open investigation because they could not locate the family. They couldn't locate? The family. Who was in charge of that investigation? I don't recall, ma'am. But that wasn't your role? That was not. Uh, we run history on both involved parties prior to going out to a call. It's true there was nothing on Jose on how in relation to this family, is that correct? I don't recall, ma'am. <coughs> was 
Was there anything in your recollection about Jose Angel Ruiz anywhere in your records? I don't recall. Did you look? Yes, we look into every in, every involved family member or that to be the case of being called on. I just don't recall. You did know you were coming here today and that Jose Angel Ruiz is the person at the defense table. I have Jack to argue it sustained. You didn't make any effort then to look into Jose Angel before you came here today. Objection to argue it I'll roll. Uh, answer that question. No, ma'am, because I'm no longer employed with CPS, so I have no oh, I'm sorry. factors. Thank you. I'm sorry, what did you say you're doing now? I work for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I'm a captain at the Torres Unit in Hondo. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Thank you, Judge. Um, so I'm going to play the rest of this interview that's already been admitted, but before I do, just a few questions. CPS, that's not an arresting, an arresting agency, correct? That's correct. Okay, whose job in this case would that have been? The San Antonio Police Department. Okay, and they also observed the interview with Jordan? Correct, I believe so. I'm just going to play the rest of the interview now. Now, are you uh, tell me your sister's name. Mercedes. Mercedes? Mm -hmm. How old is your sister, Mercedes? Five. Okay, I want to go back to when you said that your mom was, was feeding her, okay? Tell me everything that happened before that. And then they uh, did bread, and my mom, my mom did a bread, and my sister's mom. Your, your, they, you said they did a, a bread? Did they did that right or wrong? Mm, yeah. Tell me more about that. And I started uh, doing this on her stomach so that way she could, um, uh, like, not because she was not uh, feeling good. Okay. And she was full. <laughs> Tell me about the place that you were at at the time when that was happening. And my mom spent time. Do you know that person's name? No, I don't know. Tell me everyone that was at your mom's friend's house. Uh, her little son and her dancing. Okay. Tell me everything you were doing at the time when they gave her the breath. Um, eating my food. Okay. And help me understand who gave her breath. Uh, my mom. Your mom? Okay. Tell me everything about the way she gave her breath. That she put her hand up and hand out, and then she gave her a breath. Now tell me all about what your sister looked like when your mom was feeding her. Uh, she was on a chair. Okay. Tell me all about what her face looked like. Um, there was a little bit of scratches right here already. Tell me all about the scratches. Like, last time she scratched herself too hard and then this kind of off. Like a skin, one little skin. Okay. All right. Tell me everything that your mom's friend was doing when your mom was giving your sister a breath. Uh, going upstairs. Going upstairs? Mm -hmm. Tell me more about it. Uh, because she didn't want to see my things. Okay. Because my mom didn't want her to see my things. said she didn't want to see Mercedes because your mom didn't want her to see Mercedes. Mm -hmm. okay. What was the very next thing that happened after your mom gave her a breath? Uh, they took her to my mom's boyfriend's house. Tell me all about that. And then she, my sister, threw up and then she didn't come back to that. Okay. Tell me everything about the way that she threw up. Like, Oh, food. Okay, tell me everything you can see in that. Okay. You said they took her to your mom's boyfriend's house. Did I hear that right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Right. What's that person's name? 
about the place that you were at at the time when that happened? At Jose's apartment. At Jose's apartment? When he just moved in. Um, when you said, you said at Jose's apartment when he just moved in. Help me understand what you mean by that. Like he got another apartment, but his bill was too high. Okay. And uh, the water started getting cold, so my sister had to take cold showers. Tell me everything that helps you know she had to take cold showers. Like, they put her in the water, and she started reaching, rinsing herself. Then what happened? And then, uh, my mom would have to hold her under the water sometimes. Okay. Is that something that you saw with your eyes, something that someone told you, or something else? With my eyes. Tell me everything you could see in that happened. My mom was holding her on the water, and you know the little thing on the floor? Help me understand what you mean. Like the water thing, not the shower head. Okay. The little thing on the floor, and you take a shower there, and then the water was running in her face. And then what happened? And then her toes were uh, looking bad. Okay, tell me everything about her toes. Like, this one was hairy, and this one was bruised. Well, what else do you know that it was hurting and bruised? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, how do you know that it, hurt, that it was bruised? Uh, because the last time when I was going to my birthday party, she uh, put her some shoes on, and then I said, come in, and then she come in, and then I accidentally stepped on her toe, and then she went out, and then I looked at her feet. Tell me everything you can see when you look at her feet. I agree with it. Tell me everything that had happened to her feet. Um, like, they were, um, bruised all right here. understand how she got the bruise because my mom started stepping on her feet and then she got a little tiny uh, thing right here and then she hurt herself and then Jose and Matt mm -hmm. um, started putting thumbtacks in her feet okay is that something that you saw something you that you heard or something else? Something that I saw. Okay. Tell me everything you remember about that time, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, well tell me everything that happened that time, step by step. Um, she was in the closet. Okay. And then she peed on herself, and then Jose said, make the pee, and then keep licking it and sleep there. And then she smelled like pee, and then Jose started putting thumbtacks. Okay, who was in the closet? My sister, Maxine. Okay, all right. And tell me more about the place that you were at at the time. Uh, Jose's apartment. Okay, and where in Jose's apartment were you at at the time? Uh, in his room. And tell me everyone that was in the room with that. My mom had me on the stage, and Jose. Okay. Tell me everything that your mom was doing when uh, Mercedes was in the closet. Mm, watching Jose and my mom told Jose to put something on stop. Okay. Tell me everything that he was doing when your mom told him to stop. He was getting thumbtacks, more thumbtacks, and putting them in her feet again. Tell me all about the way that he was putting thumbtacks in her feet. He was pushing them into her skin. Okay. Tell me all about what the thumbtacks thumb looked like. Like, they were round and then, uh, like, circled and then a pointy thing. They at the bottom. A pointy thing at the bottom? 
Tell me all about the way that Mercedes' body was positioned when he did that. I left to know. Okay, was, was she sitting down? Was she laying down or something else at the time? Laying down. Laying down? Tell me more about it. Um, I don't know what you mean. Okay. You said she was laying down. Um, and earlier you said that, that, that she peed. And um, that Jose told her to lick the pee. Did I hear that right or wrong? Right. Tell me more about that. He put, like he said, to put your face in me. Okay. And, and then what was the very next thing that happened after you said that? Um, she took a shower. Mm -hmm. And then she put it some wood to the Okay. Now tell me everything that you could hear while that was happening. Um, I could hear screaming. Tell me more about the screaming. Uh, Jose put the 
thumbtacks, the thumbtacks on your sister's foot. Tell me a little bit where the thumbtacks uh, are kept. I don't know what you mean. Tell me a little bit where they came from. From the wall. The wall. Tell me more about that. He got them winter in the living room and got some thumbtacks and he said that this hair and he put it right here and I said no because I was scared. Help me understand who he did that to? Me. Okay. Tell me everything you felt when he did that. Like the little needle, like right there, and then he took it out. He didn't have put it all the way in the skin, he just touched me. And then what was the reaction thing he did after that? He put it in my sister's bag and then touched her. Okay, and then what happened? Do you know if he has done something something else to your sister besides putting the thumb the, the thumbtack in her foot? No. Okay. All right. Sorry for taking me a little bit of time. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything, okay? Because everything that you tell me is just very important, okay? Tell me everything that your mom does if someone gets in, if someone misbehaves. Mm, she doesn't let us get any, any candy. She doesn't let us get any. Um, she doesn't let us go play with the friend outside. Okay. And she doesn't let us watch TV. Okay. Tell me everything that. They will send us if someone misbehaves. Mm, put them in time out in the corner. Okay. You said put them time out in the corner? Yeah. Okay. I want to go back to you earlier. Um, you talked about your sister being in the closet and that, and that she pee, okay? Mm -hmm. Tell me everything that happened before that. Um. She watched the TV and then she put some more clothes on and some more pants on. Okay. So she watched TV and then she put on some more clothes on and some more pants and then what happened? And then she kept watching TV and, and then at the end of the day she started being bad but, but she was good at first. When you said she started being bad, how do you understand? What did you mean by that? Like she started uh, going, running around in the house. Okay. And then what happened? And then, um, I said, said, get back in time now. Okay, and then what happened after that? Um, nothing else. Was there ever a time where you saw, um, well, I want to go back to earlier, okay? You said that that, um, that you saw bruises on your sister's feet. Was there ever a time where you saw bruises on any other part of her body? Mm, only on her face, and her face was bloody, like right here, right here, and right here, right here, and on her cheeks, and on her mouth. Tell me everything that happened. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. You said she had a bruise on her face. Tell me everything that caused the bruises. Uh, spanking. Tell me all about it. She, she thought, she kept moving and she didn't want to get one whooping so my mom gave her two whoopings. Tell me everything about your mom giving her whoopings. Like, she started um, whooping her with the bell and the chancla and my little bell and nothing else. Tell me everything about the way that she uh, whooped her with the bell. Um, I don't know what you mean. How did she whoop her with the bell? Um, like she 
that forte um, look to your sister with the chakra? Um, I don't know. Okay. But I know it was a big chakra. Okay. Was there ever a time where he looked there with anything else besides the um, chakra? No. Was there ever a time where you saw him do something different to um, your sister besides the book? And putting the thumbtacks in the feet. Yeah. Okay. Do you know if he had done something to someone else? Yeah. Okay. Right. Have you ever seen someone else get whooped? No. Okay. Have you ever seen someone else whoop your, si whoop your sister? about the place where that happened when you said that he that they whooped your sister. Uh, I would say the point We've been there. Okay. Because we don't have the house. Okay. Was there ever a time where it happened at a different place? No. in this case you're not allowed to start uh, deliberating internally with yourself or each other you're not allowed to do any investigation on this case you're not allowed to view anything about this case everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom does everyone understand I'm gonna give you all a break we'll be back at 245 all right for the jury
please be seated. Uh, state, you may continue. Thank you, sir. That'll be overruled. Probably five or six places on her face. Can I continue saying? Yes. Open chest. My mom will be Mercedes. Your mom will be Mercedes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. And my grandpa's niece said, um, my grandpa's niece I do have a couple of more questions to ask. You can continue coloring if you want. Okay. I'm going to put them here, okay? All right. I do have a couple more questions to ask, okay? I want to go back to earlier, uh, Jordan, when you said that, um, you said your mom, you said your sister was sick and your mom was feeding your, your sister, okay? Um, you said that your mom put um, the spoon in your sister's mouth. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where you saw someone else put something in your sister's mouth? No. Okay. Was there ever a time where your mom put something else in your sister's mouth besides this one? No. But my mom did uh, shut the spoon up to right here. Tell me more about that. She ate noodles and she kept spreading it out because she didn't like them. And my mom kept... Uh, Pushing it in, and these and these two teeth were gone already. Okay. Who is who? Um. Okay. You said the the teeth were gone. Tell me more about the the teeth being gone. Um. Last time, Jose hit in my sister's mouth and slapped her, and these two teeth came out. Tell me all about the way he slapped her. Like this. 
Okay. What helps you know that he's laughing? Because I saw him. Tell me everything you can see when that happened. Mm. Sam only slapped me. Okay. Tell me everything he slapped you with. Mm. I don't really know. Okay. What did he use to slap him? Uh, his hands. And tell and me. He has rings, golden rings. And he has a golden chain. Okay. And tell me how his hand was when he slapped her. Like this. And tell me everywhere that he slapped. My head and my head. Okay. And, okay. Tell me um, everything that you could hear when um, he slapped her. Nothing. And tell me everything that was happening at the time when he slapped her. She was crying. Okay. Tell me everyone that was there. My mom and Jose okay. are always there. You said your mom and Jose are always there? Tell me everything your mom was doing when he stopped her. Um, I don't know because she, my mom saw it and I only saw a little bit. You said you only saw a little bit your mom saw it? Mm-hmm. Okay. What helps you know that your mom saw it? Um, last time I was in there, and she was watching Jose. Okay. And, um, and Jose, um, Jose and my sister, my sister started biting him. And she, and my sister Mercedes always bites me. And she bites my mom. Where were you at at the time when you said that he uh, that he slapped her? Um, in the room. In the room? Which room were you at? Uh, uh, Jose's room. Okay. And tell me everything, tell me all about what your sister looked like when he slapped her. Um, she, she was on the bed, laid down, and he always scares her. With the, when it's nighttime in the, with that camera. With the camera? He has a new camera. Mm-hmm. Tell me all about the way he scares him with the camera. Uh, he goes high. And he scares him. Tell me what the camera looks like. It's like long and then square and then square. Okay. And help me understand where the camera is located at. Um, everywhere. Everywhere? Like, in the room, if it's in the living room, he could still see. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes she likes to get snacks when they're not there. Okay. Tell me more about that. Um, I don't know what you mean. Okay. You said she likes to get snacks when they're not there? Tell me more about it. Like, she goes in the kitchen okay. when the camera's right here, and she doesn't know, and she gets milk. But her lips is all messed up, like it's this fat. Okay. Tell me everything that happened to her lip. Um, it got popped. Was there ever a time where you slapped her anywhere, anywhere else on her body? Okay. Okay. And tell me everyone that uh, that cooks at home. Um, only my mom. Tell me everything that your mom cooks. Um, last time she cooked eggs and bananas and for my sister and me. Okay. Tell me everyone that eats the food. Okay. 
You say it was a punishment? That's what y'all get? Help me understand what you mean by that. Like we only get sandwiches. Tell me all about what kind of sandwiches. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. Well, Doran, I asked you a lot of questions today, okay? Do you have any questions for me from the things that we talked about today? No. Okay. We all have safe people in our lives. And safe people are people that we can talk to and people that we trust, okay? Who are your safe people? Um, my mom. Okay. February. It was in February of 2022. Uh, I went on um, leave in May of 22. The same year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and up until that time, what actions did you take in regard to what you had just seen? I continued to investigate the case and let uh, SAP. I'm sorry, did you say you cleared the case? I continued to investigate the case and I let SPD, SAPD take over the criminal side of the case. I know it was a handful, but I don't know the exact amount from looking into the case. And since you had the time to look, how many cases were called on Jose on how? That I don't remember, ma'am. You don't remember? No, ma'am. Did you ever bother to look? Uh, like I said previously, we do look into the cases before we go out on both parties involved. You're saying we. Who is we? All of investigators. Before you go out to a case, you look at the both parties involved. So many people at CPS looked into this matter. Is Not into this matter. I'm sorry? Not into this matter. I, I'm saying in general, on any case we get called out on, uh, the investigator will look into the parties involved. Specifically with this case, because that's why we're here, how many people looked into this case if you know? I don't know. I know I did. You didn't? I did. You did, but yes, you didn't check on Jose. Yes, I ran both backgrounds prior to going out to the case, but I don't remember in relevance to him. Isn't it true that you don't remember because there weren't any? I can't recall, ma'am. What did 
you look at before coming here today? I didn't really look at anything prior to coming here. Who did you speak with? I spoke with the district attorneys. District attorney, yes. Was it this district attorneys that you see in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. don't recall but if I would have to say back to the foster home where she was at was this a family member in this foster home or someone else it was somebody else that night it the first night we removed her she got placed in a group foster home and then placed her in a foster home I believe within the next week and then cleared the family with the following week I'm sorry, you say about the family? cleared a family member the following week Family member? I don't remember. I want to say it's Guadalupe. Excuse me? Guadalupe. She uh, a, she's a great, she great, great of, aunt. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. You cannot speak <laughs> over each other. If you speak over each other, the court reporter cannot take it down. All right. Ask your question. Guadalupe. Do you remember her last name? I do not. Do you recall if it was uh, the grandmother? No, she's a great, great, I want to say another great aunt. A great aunt. It yes. wasn't in the same house as the Homer people, was it? No, ma'am. And do you know if she's still there? I well, do not know. Acres, you're not there anymore, but the last time you were at CPS, was she at that home with that, with that particular aunt, Guadalupe? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to add to this that you, that you found out from your uh, interviews? that you didn't cover? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yes, the witness. No further questions, Your All right, is this witness excused or subject for recall? Excused from the seat. Excused, Your Honor, completely. All right, the rule has been invoked. That means you cannot discuss your testimony with anyone or view anything. The only person you're allowed to speak to our attorneys for the state of the defense. Thank you. Thank you. State call your next witness. The state call is Anthony <coughs> Adame. <coughs> Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. My name is Anthony Adami. All right, if you'll make sure you keep your voice up so that the members of the jury can hear and the court reporter can hear. Yes, Your Honor. Right, state. Good afternoon, Mr. Adami. Uh, how are you presently employed? I'm presently employed with the Department of Family and Protective Services, Child Protective Services. Okay, and what is your title there? I am a special investigator for the department. How, so we just heard from <coughs> Ms. Julie Rommel, who is no longer with the department. Um, how does your role differ from the role that she had? Understood. So my role is slightly different uh, than what we would call investigators. Special investigators are a specialized unit within the department. Our role consists of assisting investigations with high media cases, uh, child death investigations, any investigation involving uh, serious injuries such as skull fractures, broken bones, severe burns, 
anything complex uh, with that happens within the department, uh, they assign us to these cases to include uh, cases such as labor trafficking, uh, sex trafficking. Uh, we conduct investigations on our own employees. We conduct investigations with law enforcement. And uh, we act as liaisons for law enforcement and, uh, and uh, all local law enforcement as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have approximately six years in law enforcement. I was a police officer at Belton Police Department, located just north of uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, during my time frame with Belton Police Department, I was a patrol officer. Then I uh, became a detective. While, uh, while my tenure of being a detective, I investigated crimes such as as high up as capital murder. Uh, I conducted several crimes against children, uh, those types of investigations. Uh, and then I also conducted investigations involving uh, child pornography. Uh, I also conducted investigations involving felony type cases such as theft, any kind of aggravated assault, any kind of sexual assault type cases. Uh, and then I kind of ended there shortly with uh, investigations into drug enforcement as well. I was a narcotics agent. Okay. So up until February, well, let me go back. Um, how long have you been with uh, DFPS as a special investigator? I've been with the department for approximately four years and just over two months. Uh, at the Belton Police Department. Okay, so you went straight from law enforcement to be a special investigator with CPS? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you stated earlier that as a special investigator, you work with law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, are you familiar with the case involving five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. I was on call uh, during this investigation, this particular investigation. I was called out by my supervisor uh, to uh, respond to this child death investigation. And um, do you recall the date? I believe it was on February 7th, 2022. Okay. I was called out to the Texas Vesta Medical Center. It's kind of south, south of town, south of downtown, okay. off of Military Drive. Do you, um, do you recall who was there when you arrived? When I arrived on scene, I observed uh, Officer Cahill. I observed uh, Detective Saez. Uh, the coworker that I was working with at that time, investigator Julie Rummel, uh, and then I also went directly to where the child Mercedes Lasoya was at, and I briefly recall um, seeing Jordan Lasoya, her sister, and then several medical personnel as well. As a, my focus was geared towards the child death, when I first made contact, it was to make contact with the homicide detective, primarily involved in the case. I made contact with Detective Saez. After making contact with him, we entered the room where Mercedes Lasoya was lying on a, on a bed. Yes, ma'am. Uh, including children who are deceased. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the first step that you do when you get 
go to the scene as you see a deceased child? The first step that I would do is make contact with law enforcement. If they are not already there, we are contacting them there, but most of the time they are already there before we show up. First is having that communication with law enforcement because at times that we want to maintain that integrity of their investigation. So after making contact with Detective Sias this particular night, uh, I looked over to him. We we're standing right there next to Mercedes Lasoya, and I asked, "Is it? can I go ahead and work towards seeing the entire body of this child? And what we're, I was conducting a body check for injuries uh, and anything that uh, indicated abuse or neglect. Uh, because uh, in, any time in a child death, uh, uh, we want to look for all those injuries so that we can kind of list them and, and see the uh, intensity of each injury and what, what kind of led to that. And it kind of helps towards the investigative part, w what happened, uh, how did these injuries occur for later on whenever I'm going to interview uh, the parents or individuals involved in that investigation. Yes, ma'am. Can you describe the injuries that you saw? Yes, ma'am. Starting from the bottom of her feet. Um, at the bottom of her feet, she had red small dots. I would call them like pinpoints at the bottom of her feet. Uh, there were several of them. I counted more than 10 of them. Uh, on the bottom of her left toe, there was some kind of abrasion of some sort on her left toe, particularly between her big toe and the toe right next to that. The toes in the middle, so her third and fourth one, had no toenail there, and it appeared to be like there was some severe uh, injury to that area, uh, some abrasion of some sort. I don't know if that toe was ripped off or anything of that nature. Uh, going up her, on her right, foot and left ankle there was bruising going up her leg on the left side of on her left leg and her thigh she had a pattern of markings uh, they looked kind of straight and going down her uh, left thigh and they looked some kind of um, bruising pattern uh, she had severe bruises on both sides of her hips uh, she, I would say uh, about the size of my hand. Um, she had severe bruising on her buttock area. Uh, she had severe bruising kind of near her uh, lower back area. Uh, towards the center of her chest, there appeared to be some bru bruising there as well. Uh, her left nipple appeared to have uh, been really red and discolored. Uh, it was very different from her right nipple. Um, her neck had some uh, cuts and bruising as well. Uh, her mouth, uh, when I looked into her mouth, her teeth were discolored. And I observed, uh, it looked like maybe a tooth was missing. Um, she had something underneath her chin, kind of like some, like her, the skin of her underneath her, like kind of underneath her lip, uh, looked uh, like something was there. Uh, I don't know how to describe it other than um, like it was just markings all over the bottom of her lip. She had a uh, some cuts throughout her face, on her nose, kind of towards her forehead, uh, on her cheeks. Um, her hair on both sides of her hair, uh, on the top of her hair, she had some length of hair, and it was in a ponytail. However, on the side of her hair, her hair was thinned out as if it had fallen um, or it was missing. Um, it wasn't like a haircut type, uh, like as you see on myself. It was more like bits and pieces kind of throughout her hair. Um, and. I believe that's pretty much all the uh, injuries that I see, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, what was 
Oh, and, and I, I forgot to mention on her arms. She had bruising on her arms, and particularly where her <clears throat> her hands were at in this area right here, there was some pretty severe bruising as well. show you what's been labeled at this point for identification purposes states exhibits 10 through 38 can you look at those and let me know if those are fair and accurate depictions of what you saw that night Yes, ma'am. These are the photographs. Do you know who took these photos? Uh, yes, ma'am. I had instructed uh, investigator Julie Rummel to take photographs. Uh, some of these pictures, I can see my own hands in them. Uh, I was present, and I instructed her to take photographs while I was helping maneuver the body with uh, medical personnel. Your Honor, I'd offer states exhibits 10 through 38. No objection, Your Honor. All right, states exhibits number 10 through 38 are admitted without objection. And why is it important for CPS to take photos? Uh, during our investigations, um, we have to collect evidence for our own investigations, and it proves that element of uh, abuse and uh, physical abuse, neglect, those sort of things, so we can prove those later on in court if need be. Next step was to uh, assist Julie Rummel, investigator Julie Rummel, in securing safety for the surviving sibling, which was Jordan, uh, Jordan Lasoya. Um, we kind of parted ways in the investigation. Uh, Detective Sias had informed me that he would be conducting an interview on Katrina Mendoza and uh, Jose Ruiz at the police department downtown at headquarters. And I asked him if it may I be present during that investigation, and he granted me permission to do so. So I followed law enforcement to headquarters at San Antonio Police Department, and Julie Rummel continued on with uh, securing safety for Jordan Lasoya. Okay. Uh, did you ever meet Jordan that day? I briefly saw her there at the hospital, but if I made direct, I, I did not make any direct uh, interaction with Jordan Lasoya at the hospital. So um, were you present when Jose gave the statement to Detective Sias? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you at any time, were, were you in the room or were you in a different room? No, ma'am. I was in a different room, in a viewing room, uh, while he was being interviewed by law enforcement. I would speak to Katrina Mendoza later on that evening after she was done conducting her interview with law enforcement. Um, when you met with Katrina, without going into what she said, was she forthcoming with information? Yes, ma'am. How long did you speak with her? I spoke to her approximately two and a half hours to three hours. Now, um, the next day, 
Um, did you continue in an investigation the following day? Uh, I would continue the investigation, yes, ma'am. So what did you do next? Uh, the next step, I believe, was to assist with conducting a forensic interview for Jordan LaSoya. The forensic interview is a process uh, for any time that there is a, a major event that occurs. It is a place that we take children so they can conduct an interview with uh, experts for forensic interviewers. And uh, it's in a setting uh, that's safe for the children. And that's where we conduct those investigations. So it was in the process of making that happen. Yes, ma'am. Yes. They're accredited. Um, are you familiar with the, the interviewer in Jordan's case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what was his name? His first name is Sam. Uh, his last name, I may mess this up, Abrigo. But I, I know Sam. We've met each other and had several uh, interviews together. It's the point of it is so that we don't re-victimize that children over and over. Uh, they don't have to tell their story or the event to me, law enforcement, to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. They go to one place, they tell their story, it's recorded, it's audio recorded and video recorded. So it's one, one time they tell their story instead of telling it several times. But overall to prevent re-victimization, ma'am. Okay. So other than, um, you said you went to headquarters. And yes. And you went to the forensic interview. Did you go to any other locations as part of this investigation? Yes, ma'am. Um, I learned that, uh, that they had resided, that Katrina, Katrina um, Mendoza and her children, Mercedes LaSoya and uh, Jordan LaSoya had resided for a small period of time at the Henry B. Apartments off of Vance uh, Jackson. So one of the steps that I was taking was going back to that apartment to make contact with apartment management. And how recently have they resided at Henry B.? Uh, very recent. I, I mean, uh, at the, I would say, days or within that week they resided at Henry B. Apartment, the week of uh, Mercedes LaSoya's death. Um, so if, if there had been some evidence put forward that um, it had been a month since Jose had seen the children, um, with, oh, or had lived with them, um, would that make sense with the evidence that you got from the state? Yes, ma'am. When I went to apartment management, they, I was advised that he was in the process of moving out, and I learned that he had moved to a different apartment. But I don't believe they had completely cleared out of that apartment just yet. Do you know whose apartment it was? I believe, according to the apartment manager, the apartment was listed under Mr. Jose Ruiz. And when you were there, did you see evidence that um, children lived there? When I went upstairs, um, I looked inside, and it looked like it had been cleaned, or there was a lot of stuff that was taken out. There was a couple of trash bags outside. and. Uh, when I go back, I don't recall anything that I seen, such as toys or um, small clothing, to indicate that children had been there. And that's fine. Um, when you had gone there, and and to be clear, um, did you 
go there on your own or did you go with anyone else? I went there initially on my own, um, following up on the information that was provided to me by uh, Katrina Mendoza during her interview. Um, when I made contact with apartment management there, they were like, yes, Mr. Jose Ruiz resided here. And then that's when they uh, provided me additional information. Uh, at that time, when I found out that uh, they did reside there at some point in time, I did contact Homicide Detective Saez uh, in reference to that uh, newfound information. Okay. Did you do any other investigation around Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I conducted what we call name surveys, and basically what that is, name and address surveys, it's uh, getting more information about what is happening in a particular location. Uh, I conducted this survey with San Antonio Police Department, and basically it is a list of uh, events or calls for service to that particular location. And I also... Uh, uh, I, I also got in contact with a neighbor as well. Okay. Um, did you see any concerning calls that have been made out to that apartment? Uh, yes, ma'am. There were several disturbance calls and loud music calls, uh, particularly the, the ones that were listed as disturbance. Uh, indicate, I believe one of them indicated that they heard some screaming. Um, the couple's name is Gabriel and Gabriella, I might mess up this last name, Yuturbi. Um, I had them come to uh, our, one of our offices located on uh, Nacogdoches Street up in the north side of town. Um, and I conducted an interview with them. Yes, ma'am. And Jose Ruiz. Yes, ma'am. Now, we talked about how you went up to the apartment and then you were told size. Did you ever actually gain entry into the apartment? No, ma'am. Um, I looked, the window shades were all the way up. I kind of looked inside and then I called him and he advised that he's coming from downtown and he'll make his way uh, to the apartment and I, I kind of he said he told me to kind of hang uh, tight there don't move don't leave and then he showed up uh, at the apartment did you go inside the apartment with him no ma'am uh, he indicated that uh, he would be obtaining a search warrant States eight and nine. These were left out of the, the group that I showed you earlier. Um, is that from the night that you saw Mercedes Lasoy at the hospital? Yes, ma'am. And is this a fair and accurate depiction of what she looked like at that day? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, may I publish these as well? Or, I'm sorry, may I, I'm going to offer States Exhibit eight and nine. Was it eight? I'm sorry. Eight, eight and nine. nine. Thank you. I had skipped them earlier. No objection, Your Honor. Eight and nine are admitted without objection. May I publish? Yes. question please yes sorry let me turn it um when you were okay so we have viewed the forensic interview with Jordan um in that interview um she referred to thumbtacks um was that something um 
that was then deemed important in an investigation? Yes, ma'am. And when you went to the Henry B. Gonzalez apartments, did you observe, you didn't go inside, but did you observe any thumbtacks? Yes, ma'am. Um, when I went towards the front door, outside of the front door, kind of on the wall, to the left of the front door, there was a single thumbtack kind of uh, eye level. I'm, I'm possibly about five, uh, six or so. So I'd say just a little bit taller than me. Uh, so that's where I observed it. Uh, no, ma'am. Thumbtack, two okay. thumbtacks. Were these the th two thumbtacks that you observed? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, may I would offer State's Exhibit 39. Any objection? No, Your Honor, no. State's Exhibit 39 is admitted without objection. Your Honor, may I publish? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. We went back to the original location where uh, Mercedes Lasoya, Jordan Lasoya, and Katrina Mendoza were residing at a new apartment uh, with a with a friend, Jeanette Menendolia. Another last name that's difficult to pronounce. And um, did you speak to uh, Jeanette? Yes, ma'am. Was there anything uh, troubling about Jeanette? Yes, ma'am. What was troubling about her? Uh, the troubling nature was that she had observed some of these injuries to Mercedes Lasoya and that she did not report that to law enforcement or Child Protective Services or any other adult for that matter. I instructed uh, inv investigator Julie Rummel that we should open up another investigation primarily on uh, Jeanette after we supervised or after we um, spoke with her supervisor we called in a new intake and conducted an investigation on Jeanette as well okay. for uh, uh, alleged abuse and neglect. Okay. Yeah. I cannot recall at this time, ma'am. Okay. Um, that's fair. Okay. So, um, at the end of this investigation, um, what did you do with your findings? Uh, I take my findings and I present that information to the investigator. Uh, the investigator at this uh, will take that information and will make a disposition with, uh, they'll also discuss that with their supervision and make an overall disposition whether that's uh, reason to believe that neglect or an ab abuse have occurred uh, and there's other uh, dispositions as well. Yes, ma'am. And who were they? Uh, 
I consulted with uh, I consulted with Julie Rummel's supervisor at that time, Jeanette Salazar. I consulted with my supervisor, Robert Ruiz. Uh, I did consult with Heather Bryant. Well, um, she was, yes, briefly. She was in one of our staffings. Uh, are you aware which one of them was the last to see Mercedes? Yes, Heather Bryant was the last one to see Mercedes and at that for time, the department. At, the, at, at that time, did Heather file any complaints about Mercedes? Um, I don't recall at that time. Yes, ma'am. Alive. Uh, do you know how recently that was to your past? I believe Heather had seen her in early or mid-January. So I would say it was within a couple of weeks or so from her passing. Ask your questions. Mr. I make Teresa Connors. Yes, I'm going to go backwards here. With all these, you're saying that that Miss Heather Bryant saw her a couple weeks before she died. I would say it's in that January, January time frame. She didn't observe bruises or anything. I can't recall what she wrote on her uh, observations, ma'am. I can't recall. I can't recall what she wrote on her observations. Well, we have old bruises on February 7th and hair pulled out. So what does CPS do about it then? If she would have made those observations, she would have made some kind of safety plan or safety intervention, ma'am. What did CPS do about the bruises that were there prior to February 7th? Ma'am. Objects, uh, speculation, lack of personal knowledge. Yeah. Oh, that council laid a foundation for his ability to answer that question. So, January of 2021, somebody from your department, Ms. Heather Bryant, interviewed Mercedes. To your knowledge, did she do anything to protect Mercedes? I know that she was actively trying to locate Katrina Mendoza, who left that residence. Where did she interview them? She interviewed them at Homer Beltran's residence off of Caspin Point, I believe it is. And you're saying in January of 2021? In that December, January time frame. But I was not present, ma'am, at that at those interviews. Investigator in charge of all this, right? No, ma'am. I was the investigator assigned to the death investigation when the death occurred on January or February seventh. So anything before that, I was not actively involved in that investigation, ma'am. But did you look into what was done before Mercedes' death? I briefly looked into it, yes, ma'am. And what is your recollection, if you have one, of when the last time CPS had an inter interest or interview or contact again ma'am that January Mercedes. that January time frame and to your knowledge what was done to protect Mercedes from that point <clears throat> I do not recall at this time ma'am don't you think it's important yes ma'am excuse me but why don't you recall we're talking about the death of a child Sustained. Okay, from the beginning of your cross examination, you did general police work when you were with Belton PD, is that right? Yes, ma'am. You 
said in your course of your um, description of your activities there, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I could make a mistake here, but you say said you deal with high media cases. Yes, ma'am. So media involvement <coughs> directs your attention, is that correct? That's one aspect, yes, ma'am. What do you do particularly with media cases? The same as all investigations, ma'am. We now, conduct thorough Scott, investigations. Excuse me. There can only be one person speaking at a time. You may answer the question. Sorry, ma'am. Same as all investigations, ma'am. But this specifically was built in when you referred to the media. No, ma'am. I was referring to my duties at the Department of Family and Protective Services. We're calling this interchangeably CPS and Department of Family and, what is it, Family and? Protective Services, ma'am. Protective Services, but it's basically the same place. Yes, ma'am. Commonly called CPS. And commonly called the Department as well, ma'am. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. And you first learned of Mercedes when? On February 7th. Not before that? Not before that, no, ma'am. Even though in January, Ms. Bryant apparently interviewed the family, including Mercedes, at Homer's house. Is that correct? I was going to answer it. That'll be overruled. She can answer the question. <coughs> that, that is the history, yes, ma'am. Most recent history. It's the history, ma'am. Once again, I'm old. I don't remember everything. Do you recall any follow up of CPS after that investigation in January of 2021, 2022, right before she died? I recall that investigator Heather Bryant at the time was trying to locate Katrina Mendoza and there was some disconnect in communication for a period of time. Towards the end of her, or towards the, towards her investigation in the beginning of our death investigation. Do you have any recollection of what Heather did as a result of January 22 interview. No, ma'am. You say there was a disconnect. Uh, objection, lack of personal knowledge wasn't there. No, it wasn't. Excuse me. You can answer the question if you can answer it, but if <coughs> you're not present, then the objection will be sustained. Uh, I was not present, ma'am. You weren't present, but is that just isolated? Does CPS have isolated interviews here and then investigators later don't know what happens? Is there any connection within your department? as to what is done to protect a child. Yes, ma'am. We do go back and look at some of that history. But in the beginning of a death investigation, there's a lot of things occurring right at the beginning of that death investigation. So, so we do go back to that historical information. But initial on that day one, I'm kind of working all those steps that I was uh, talking about earlier, ma'am. Yes, do you want to respond to her objection? In regard to speculation, how could it be speculation if he was an investigator in charge of this incident? All right, your objection is overruled. I'm sorry, Your Honor? The objection is overruled. You can answer that, sir. Can you ask a question again, ma'am? I'm sorry. Ma'am, would you read it back for the court, please? <coughs> Is there any other objection besides speculation? Uh, argumentative. That will be overruled. Overruled. 
as not being the primary investigator in that previous investigation, I cannot respond for that investigation. I was only working on the investigation that I was assigned to, ma'am. You have basic procedures, sir, yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when somebody has an investigation and things were not perfect because you, there was a follow-up, exactly what is done to save the children who are being supposedly protected by your agency? Does that counsel testify? Are you out of what, I mean, lack of knowledge of what, was, what happened before her death? All right, that'll be overruled unless there's another objection. So to answer your question, ma'am, when I came into, into this death investigation, we did just that. We removed Jordan LaSoya, the surviving child, so we conducted a removal to keep her safe from additional abuse and neglect. Yeah. As a rule, when somebody is investigating, they can't find somebody that interview needs a follow-up. What, as a rule, does your company do to protect the children out there? We, con we continue to try to strive towards engaging that communication. Maybe there's a miscommunication with that family but we continue to try to engage that family. But each case is different, ma'am. This case, again, I'm asking you, what could your company, your CPS, have done to protect Mercedes from being killed by whatever? Object to, to vague and vague and vague That objection will be overruled. Again, ma'am, I wasn't involved in the investigation previous to me, so there is, I can't account for what happened before me. I can only account for what we did during the course of my investigation, and we did conduct a removal of Jordan LaSoya. Jordan's not dead. Prior to this investigation, I asked you generally. What does CPS do to protect the children that are in danger? Generally. The, generally speaking, there's probably different plans, such as a safety plan. Maybe we have a family member that will come in and kind of assist with that supervision of the children. Uh, sometimes we do what's called family team meetings, where we bring f several family members and collaterals our professionals in and try to talk about the issue uh, all the way up to removing a child from a home um, and probably pacing with uh, family Mercedes, members or sorry. go ahead ma'am was Mercedes removed from the home no ma'am why not again I cannot answer the questions for an investigation that was previous to me ma'am I started the investigation on February 7th when I was notified about the death of Mercedes LaSoya. And I, I've never done a investigation with Mercedes LaSoya alive in all my years of being with the department. I realize that, sir, but you're the investigator at the point of, at least at the point of her death. Did you look at it? Uh, let me hear the question. At least at the point of her death. Did you do any investigation to find out what had been done to try to prevent the death? To your knowledge, what, if anything, did CPS do to try to prevent Mercedes' death? Object to Austin answer, object relevance. Sustained. in charge to follow through on cases that are being investigated? Contact to all of us. Sustained. Your Honor, I'd like a ruling on that. Sustained. I said sustained. Could I have what? No why? It's not relevant. It's the not the relevant objection to the, the state's objection was objection relevance. I sustained it. Now, if you want to address 
as how it's relevant, the court will hear that. I'm asking, Your Honor, how is it relevant? The objection has been made. The court has sustained it. You may ask your next question, counsel. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I don't understand why you ruled that it was irrelevant when we're talking about the death of a child and the follow-up of CPS. All right, the court has made its ruling. The objection from the state was relevance. If you want to respond to their relevance objection, I will hear it. Otherwise, their objection to relevance is sustained, and you can ask your next question. When you checked Mercedes' body in the hospital, you said you looked under the clothes, I believe, or the blanket or whatever was on her? The only thing that she had on was a pair of uh, orange underwear. Orange but, but you did check the body? Yes, ma'am. And you said that there were bruises of varying degrees of age, severity, etc. I did not mention anything about bruising and age. I indicated that there was bruises, but I didn't indicate the age of any bruises. You didn't say that some were earlier or some were more recent, that there were various... Uh, I don't recall that, ma'am. You didn't say that? I don't recall saying anything about That's age safe. because I don't, I can't... As an investigator, I would elect to utilize medical professionals to indicate those kind of injuries. But you looked at Mercedes' body. Yes, ma'am. And you did see bruises. We've all seen them now with the pictures. Some yes, ma'am. Some of them were recent? Uh, again, I'm going to elect to have a medical personnel answer that type of question, ma'am, as I am not medical personnel. Did you notice the color of the bruises? Were some yellow? Were some blue? Were some faded? I observed that some of them appeared to look like a darker, darker than her hue. I would say kind of like a dark uh, grayish, black, bluish type color. Black and blue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, with your observation, was there anything that appeared to be very recent? Object to asking you. All right, that will be overruled. You can answer if you can answer. Objective calls by opinion. It was overruled. That will be overruled. If you can answer. No, ma'am, I, I don't, I, I can't answer that question because I don't know, I didn't know exactly what was real recent. Couldn't say that it was recent. Did you just say that you saw blood on her face or mouth? Because her teeth were out? I observed like abrasions where you can kind of see like the red blood on top of those abrasions. Yes. Okay, and you, you testified that some teeth were missing. Is that right? I observed like a, a tooth kind of time near the front that looked like it was missing a piece of it or something. They, in the front. It's the kind child of was five years old. Yes? Yes, ma'am. You, are you familiar that children lose their first teeth or baby teeth at around that age? Yes, ma'am. Could that have been the reason why your teeth were missing? Because that's a speculation. Right, if you can answer. Um, you mentioned too that your teeth were, were decayed or? <clears throat> there was some discoloration, ma'am. Discoloration? Yes, ma'am. What kind of discoloration? Uh, it just looked uh, more yellow more, um, there was like a, a yellowish tint than some of the others. Was it about hygiene that you were saying or was it actual wounds? Mm, I would say uh, most likely hygiene or something of that nature, man. at this child safe interview throughout the whole time, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And as a result of that, what action do you take? As a result of the forensic interview, I went to the apartments to try to backtrack where uh, it happened at. And you had never been there prior to 
No, ma'am. Henry B. Apartments? No, ma'am. Is there any record that your company, or excuse me, CPS, had been to the Henry B. Apartment prior to the incident of her death? I checked her elements. All right, that will be uh, sustained. Was there any indication in your records that that <coughs> Bryant had been to the Henry B. Apartments prior to the death of Mercedes? I don't believe so, ma'am. When you had your interviews with neighbors and people at Henry B, um, they indicated that they had made reports about loud noise and disturbances. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. As a result of those disturbances, was CPS contacted? No, ma'am. Why was it relevant for you to testify that reports had been made? Sustain. What specific text, uh, steps did CPAs CPS tape to follow up on Katrina, who was under investigation. Sustained. Your Honor, it wasn't relevant that there was a follow up on somebody who was a known abuser? Sustained. had no personal uh, investigation with Jose Ruiz prior to the death of Mercedes Lasoya. Was there any investigation that you know of into Jose on how Ruiz regarding this family? Not that I recall, ma'am. January of 2021? Yes, January of Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what is State's Exhibit Number 40? It appears to be some contact narratives, several contact narratives involving uh, Heather Bryant, Tiffany Garland, and uh, Adrienne House. Okay. Is there an entry from January 19th of 20, 2020? Yes. January 19th, 2022. Yes, ma'am. And is there a, an entry by Heather Bryant from January 19th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. And is this documenting the encounter that has been at issue that Heather Bryant had with Jordan, Lis I mean, sorry, Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
did Heather Bryant notate that there were any injuries on Mercedes LaSoya on January 19th, 2022? This one right here, ma'am, is for Jordan LaSoya. Okay. And she doesn't notate that there's no observed marks or bruises on her. Family team meeting is basically bringing together uh, parents, grandparents at times, uh, various family members, aunts, uncles. Sometimes we even include uh, medical pro professionals sometimes. And it's addressing uh, the issue. Uh, if the issue, uh, for example, deals with some kind of physical abuse or some kind of uh, narcotic usage in the home, uh, we'll address those out in the open with the family and talk with the family. It's kind of like a bringing the whole family together and saying, this is the issue that we have at hand. What can we do to remedy this issue? What needs to be in place to kind of remedy that, that issue and, uh, and have an extra set of eyes for that particular uh, issue? It is a common practice, yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and why would you have a family team meeting? Before departing the case, we like to bring everyone together uh, to say, okay, before we depart this case, uh, these are the these are our concerns. How you know, making sure that everybody understands those concerns and that we move forward uh, after that. About one or so, yes, ma'am. Probably two if they want to add a another family member that maybe did not show the first one. If both ch p children are present, they're going to see both children. Okay. Was, um, did Heather Bryant initiate a removal of Mercedes on that day? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, in fact, she, she, had, she was scheduling a family team meeting for the following week. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the witness one more time? Parties approach now.
Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does this also document Brother Bryant's contact with the family on January 19th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does looking at this remind you what um, her contact was that day? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So on January 19th of 2022, um, is, is there any indication that Mercedes had any bruises of any sort? No, ma'am. Okay. And in fact, doesn't she document that she seemed healthy and happy? Yes, ma'am. How about Jordan? As a result of that, healthy and happy, why was she trying to do the follow-up and not make those find between them? It appears that she was trying to conduct a family team meeting with Katrina Mendoza. It appears. Yes, ma'am. And why was that? Because it's one of those steps that we take in investigations to bring all the family together to address a concern. What was the concern at that point if there were no bruises? Objects for lack of personal knowledge. That'll be overruled. Question one more time, ma'am. Diana, excuse me, would you please do that and sign and we get back? What was the concern at this point if there were no bruises? Objection to lack of personal A family team meeting is to address the initial concern that occurred in that particular investigation. Why we got called out to that investigation. In any particular investigation, we're going to address that initial concern. Now, if other concerns present themselves, we'll address those concerns as well. In this particular situation, it appears that she was happy and healthy and didn't appear to have any bruises. So it'll probably, I'm speculating, she was trying to address that first uh, concern. However, I w again, I was not involved in that investigation with Heather Bryant. I came later on February 7th when I was called out to the death investigation of Mercedes Lasoya. This happy and healthy child was dead three weeks after that interview. CPS did nothing to stop the death of Mercedes Lasoya. Object to compound question. Sustain. In your opinion, did CPS do enough to try to save the life of Mercedes? I'm sorry. Object to relevance. Sustain. Did CPS do anything other than what we've discussed to try to save the life of Mercedes Lasoya? Objection made. Objection relevance. Sustain. Was the proper protocol used by CPS in this investigation to save Mercedes? Object to relevance. Sustained. Could CPS have done anything more to save the life of Mercedes Lasoya? Object to speculation and object to relevance. Sustained. As an investigator, is it your requirement to be able to know things like, like I've been asking you? Sustained. Are you, is it your job to close the case or is it your job to help the children? Uh, objective A. Objective relevance. Sustained. Pass the witness. No further questions. Is this witness excused? Excused from the seat. Defense? Subject to recall. 
Right, the rule has been invoked. What that means is you cannot discuss your testimony with anyone, you cannot view anything. Only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state and the defense. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Make sure that you're available in case you're recalled. Yes, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Yes, ma'am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we're going to take our uh, break for the day because I promised you all that if possible, I would have you out before rush hour traffic. These are my instructions, and I'm going to give you these instructions always when we're taking a break and we're recessing. Number one, you're not to start <coughs> deliberating internally with yourself or with each other. You're not allowed to talk to anybody about anything that you've heard uh, in this courtroom as it relates to this trial. You are not allowed to do any investigation. You're not allowed to watch anything. If someone ends up trying to speak to you about what you've heard, you need to let them know that you're a juror and not pay any attention to them. If you happen to see anything, you're to turn it and not pay any attention to it. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? Yes, All right, so what, we can go off the record. We're gonna start tomorrow at 10.